Hello, guys. Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back to second live stream today. Yes. We're on fire. Oh, my God. <laughs> and we're tired. And last night was a marathon one in itself. And then another one at 3 o'clock today on the new I'm a Creator uh, channel, which actually went for almost two hours. And if I may say so myself, some very great improv by yours truly to fill in the time as we had a bit of technical issues. Yes. But hey, that's what makes it all fun, right? We got to run with it. Yeah, and that's what happens sometimes with uh, live streams that you run into some technical issues, and that's okay. We all sometimes uh, get through with that. Yeah, exactly. It's all a learning curve. I mean, yes. we forget sometimes with this amazing technology that we have. What we're doing right now wasn't dreamed about a couple of years ago. I mean, this was Star Trek talk. It's am <laughs> it's amazing how things have grown, and we do take it for for. Uh, uh, we uh, oh my god oh my we've been granted, on too long so granted granted, granted granted thank god we have somebody on tonight that's going to be talking about travel because we definitely could use a vacation <laughs> As, yes yeah it's friday night uh you all have been working hard all week so did we and now we're ready just to sit back uh, put our feet up yep. relax and enjoy our live stream and we hope that you do too i'm looking here from TriStar Travelers, who is just, well, takes, um, you're all awesome. I can't stress that enough. But TriStar Travelers, who just started a couple of days ago with us, writes, just pulled over, just pulled over to log in. We'll be, we'll be listening only for the first hour while I drive home, lol. But then, but hey, Pusha and Halo, I'll chime in as soon as I get home. I mean, you know. That's a dedication. Yeah, that That's is. a dedicated support, and we appreciate it so much. And it might sound cliche, but as tired as we are, we are you guys' support, keep coming back, keep participating. It makes it all worthwhile. Yes. We can't thank you enough. Uh, Tyler, hey, push another Canadian who just started his vlog a couple, uh, well, not that long ago. Yeah, he's yeah. got into it, and he's uh, got a couple of good videos already, and he's going full stream. He supports lots of people too. I always see him out doing that, and that's yes, what's growing him. Yes. Uh, he's got some. Uh, he's getting great numbers for it. So check it out if you haven't yet. He is proof that hard work does pay off. So that's a great thing. Yeah, we have a uh, railroad preserver two thousand. Yes, so. welcome. I still want to watch your videos. I know you sent me the link. Please know that I even put them in a special, uh, um, a special uh, bookmark because I am going to watch them. It's just been too crazy the last couple of days. Island Aesthetics, our yesterday's yes. guest, what was amazing streaming. Yep. If you haven't seen it after this one ends, go back and watch it. Yep. Amazing tips for getting in the shape, uh, for traveling across yes. Canada. So you have to look things. at Prince Edward Island. It's yes. one of our favorite, it is one of our favorite provinces, tiny, but so much to offer. I mean, it's it's like its own little world on its own. So and his motivation is speech was so convincing that uh we're even thinking of maybe that's we right do something that's about right it. because of him i put extra effort when i stirred my coffee this morning when i was trying <laughs> to wake up so you see he's already planted a seed i i feel better already so but definitely want to take Go more what he out. said to heart yes definitely <laughs> seven blessings welcome so much uh familiar faces same as terrell oh my god uh yeah we Amazing. love having you guys thank you so much for everybody who is on yep. already don't forget to uh to tweet it out and share the more the merrier the more people we have on the more we can chat about different things and tonight is going to be amazing we're going to have our special guest is halos and heavens and there's so many things to talk about with them and there is travel and shopping and uh, makeup and unboxing unboxing i'm excited about yeah it. i don't know it's a new thing or what yeah but everybody's doing the unboxing but and these guys they try everything and i want to hear about it yeah, and to our guests that are out there if you are listening tonight i just had sent you the twitter with the link and i'm sure 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 i sent you the wrong link i sent you the link to watch it which we definitely want you on so i'm going to send you the one here <laughs> That is where we're at today. That's a good, like, this is like the barometer of what we're at. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, drop your question to our guests uh, down in the chat. Uh, if you put our uh, our tag on, 
that would be uh, amazing at the front of your uh, question just put uh, at push studios because then it highlights for us and i can see it better and if we don't get to your question right away uh don't worry i have it saved and we'll get it later on through as we chat so definitely uh, please this is going to be a really great night guys since for a saturday night to have great guests like this this Friday. Oh my God! Will you stop! <laughs> I think I'm gonna go lay down for the first half of the show, <laughs> and I'm gonna listen. Them it's no, because they're gonna tell me about Jamaica. They're gonna tell me about all these amazing <laughs> things, and my head will be somewhere else, and that will be better for everybody. So I definitely, definitely need this channel right now more than ever. I need them more than ever. This is like a prescription, people. This is my help. This is my therapy. This is where I need to be right now. They are my saviors. I had motivational talk last night. And he got me stirring my coffee harder, walking faster as I grab the computer to go from one side of the room to the other. And now tonight, I'm going to find out when all the exercise pays off, where I'm going on vacation. And we need some yeah. sun. You know what? We're in Montreal. Oh. It snowed today. It Again. Snow. And I know what you're Again. thinking. Oh, it's Canada. They always get snow. Well, we don't always get snow, and I'm no. really tired. And I don't want to live up the stereotype anymore. Where's the sun? Spring. Yes. So we're begging for you guys to please send some. Send it from California. Our yes. guests today are from California. Please yeah. send it. Send it over. Where is it? <laughs> and without further ado, let's bring them in because <laughs> they are so glad that once again on a Friday night to join us. I should Friday. say. <laughs> I see. I'm Just... getting that. So. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> guys, welcome to the show. Um, <laughs> we're so honored to have you guys here. Uh, uh, you want to talk a little bit about your channel first? Sure. Can you guys hear us? Okay. We can hear you guys yep. perfectly. Awesome. Welcome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, first, let us start by saying thank you so much for having us. We've been uh, kind of cyber stalking you on Facebook and Instagram <laughs> Love it. and YouTube. So uh, we're, we're really excited to be here. Maybe even a little nervous because this is our first kind of guest spot on a live stream. Yeah. Oh, we're honored. <laughs> yeah, you picked the right one, believe me. <laughs> this is a great place to cut your teeth on it. We're pretty lax. So. <laughs> we're used to it with uh, podcasting, but never on a live stream. So uh, I'm sure we'll do some crazy things because we'll forget that people can see us. So we'll start looking at each other right. and give each other hand signals and that'll yeah. happen. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's what I love about dynamic when there's two people yes. on the channel. And I, and I find I notice that too. It's like a lot of body language and a lot of things behind the scenes that people you're like a baby when they first learn how to walk they do it great until they realize some of they're walking then they drop that's yeah. like us we do great until we realize we're in front of a camera <laughs> right yeah i'm sure i'm sure we're going to do something insane but well i'm looking forward you guys are going to be awesome thank you did you want to describe the channel oh no you do it <laughs> <laughs> so our channel is kind of schizophrenic it's pretty much a recording of our lives we do everything it's vacations it's unboxings it's beauty stuff it's a lot of dogs which you'll probably hear um it's drinks it's food it's going out it's staying in it really is when we started it we just wanted it to be a look into our lives we we just wanted it to be as much us as it as you can do on youtube um but we really i know everyone says like oh you should have a niche and we were like our niche is us it's being crazy so that's just what we decided to do so our channel is really self-indulgent and it's just about us i love it that is itself for sure yeah. <laughs> lifestyle. Is lifestyle. yeah yeah so it was so and we've been having fun doing it we started uh actually doing the vlogs i guess seven months ago now um we moved we have a lot of videos on the channel because we moved all our podcast videos from our podcast channel onto this uh we moved our vacation walkthrough videos onto this to kind of you know, we figured if we're going to do this and we were hoping to get monetized, we're going to put them all in one place and use those views to our advantage because I'm going to work the system any way I can. Love That's it. just how I roll. <laughs> That's how uh, we love it. Exactly. Yeah. And then just the attitude you got to have. I mean, I, we are modest as well. You know, modesty only gets you so far that you, there's a difference between promoting yourself and obnoxious. And you do have to be an outgoing person to be on this platform. It's just part yes. of the game. Yeah. yeah, and I've got obnoxious down, so I'm. I'm, <laughs> oh, gonna, I'm looking more and more love forward it, to this tonight. It. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun too because it it kind of started with Annalise. She was thinking she was she loves watching makeup videos on YouTube. I like watching music and car and motorcycle videos. Right. Was like you know, after doing the podcast for so long, Annalise was like, "I think we could do this," and I'm like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Well, go ahead, and I'll help you out." And then the next thing I knew. 
I was sitting there next right. to her putting on makeup. I'm like, all right, I guess this is what we're doing now. Totally. Right? Oh, my God. <laughs> so Why the not? a good sport, yeah. too. That's great. <laughs> I wonder if I can do that bad. Bad. Yeah. Too or not, the putting on makeup first. I don't know. <laughs> I hope you guys don't mind. I'm just showing a little bit of your channel oh, yeah. here. Not at all. Please do. And again, we're sorry. Probably in the background, you're going to hear the dogs a bit, but they're that's just fine. part of the deal. Yeah. No, that's no problem at all. Glad to have them here. They're part of the show. So that's our pleasure. Also want to say hello to everybody in the chat. And thank you so much for dropping in and oh. checking it out. And I'm sorry now for whatever will come out of my face during this <laughs> Next two hours. I have fingerprints in my knee for where Xenia squeezes my knee when I'm getting too off or something like that. <laughs> and it depends on the night. Some night these nights are more squeezed than others. So that's great because we talked about it before we came on. We're like, we can't. We have little dry erase boards that we use when we have guests on the podcast, and we're like, we can't do that. So we're gonna have to do like these weird eye signals and squeezing each other's legs when it's like, hey, let them talk for a while. Be quiet now. Right. You stop talking. Let yeah. them talk in the show. Yeah. Well, they've heard us talk a lot. So it's really that we want to hear you guys. And yeah. I mean, that's that's the big part of this. And I look, like we told everybody since we started, it is kind of a bit of the where the eye creator started. It is, mm -hmm. we're not affiliated with them in any way. It's not that, it's just building on the people that we met from there. We've gotten to know each other so much from watching each other's videos and the thing now is to kind of get to know everybody better i think that builds better long-term uh cooperation with each other appreciation for what they do uh we were a great example because we're actually behind the camera mm -hmm. so people kind of didn't know what we were till the night we showed up on james you know because sometimes Xenia would answer sometimes i'd answer we have very different interests and videos and very different ways of talking yeah yeah so i'm sure some people were scratching their heads you know sometimes <laughs> they on the same channel so i think it cleared up a lot of questions that oh night. i love that mascara <laughs> yeah. oh i like driving trucks <laughs> yeah, too. yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. You guys, I'm not trying to pick sides, but I think we're quite driven to the snow of how we answer and look <laughs> right. the world. You yes. guys have been killing it lately with all the live streams and being on all these. I mean, it's been so much fun. It's it's a lot. Again, I'm, we're going to refer to the podcast a lot because that's what we did for so sure. long. Sure. Uh, it's it's. Uh, I mean, it's kind of like you really start to create these friendships with people you oh. have never met, and even more so with with YouTube because you see them and you see like their homes or where they go out, and it's, yes. it's a blast. So we'll be over in like an hour and a half, and you know we'll just we'll have a snack or something with yeah. you. <laughs> Perfect. We got a bed ready for you. <laughs> Bring some sun, yeah. as I said. <laughs> yeah. I do. I think it's a bit of that Eastern attitude of where I grew up, the Eastern part of Canada. The Mar I, Even though I was from, I'm from Quebec originally, I'm from the very Eastern part of it, which is more in turn with the Maritimes. And I always wanted, we, well, no, I shouldn't say I always wanted, since we got this channel rolling, I've kind of wanted to imitate those house parties that they had there. Mm -hmm. where everybody would just get together and you'd have like, you know, the five guitars, the fiddle, everybody's telling jokes and laughing till two in the morning. There's no real order to it. It's just friendly chaos. Yeah, no, I love it. Well, I'll bring one of my guitars and we'll hang I've out. I've seen that. We're going to be talking about that. Yes. I, I've seen sure. BC pictures if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm into it. I'm so excited. <laughs> so, no, no, that is definitely right on, well, it's I think the second thing on my list. Yes. Yeah. And I didn't put it first because then Xenia would get frustrated with me. So I just put it second. <laughs> guitars. Like, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <That's great>. so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, as we were saying, it's this. This is more about people behind the channel yeah. because uh, we watch each other's videos, and yes, we partly get to know each other. But it's more about who is behind it. What is there else? You know, maybe mm -hmm. there's we haven't seen in the video. So that's what the, there's always a story behind. Yeah, it. because mm. it's it's channels is one thing, but there are people behind each channel, and that's what we want to connect at the end. Yeah. Yep. No, definitely. So we, what we first did you guys into your podcast? I guess we'll start right back, like go kind of to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Can you tell a little bit about your podcast, what it was about? You know, like just bring everybody up to speed and then what brought you to it? Sure. So I played music for a long time and was in uh, a lot of bands. And as I got older, um, it just, it, you know, the, the drama in bands and in music, I was just at the point in my life where I'm like, now I understand when people hit their mid forties, why they say, I'm done with this. I don't want to deal with this anymore. Um, so, so I quit the band, but I still wanted to do something creative and I still wanted to make other people listen to me in some way. <laughs> and, um, we, we were, we started listening to podcasts and we thought, Oh, you know, this would be a really fun way to record stories about our life 
And then like my sister's kids, when she has them and nieces and nephews and all that could go back and listen, like after we're gone. And the podcast seemed like a really easy way to do it. I mean, it's, it's fairly inexpensive, if not free to post it. And first we thought we would like send an MP3 file out to our friends. And then we realized, you know, that, that won't work. So we'll just, we'll go ahead and post it where people can go and listen. And we didn't think anyone else would ever listen because it's really, we sit every week and have an hour to an hour and 10 minute conversation about our week. It's, it's us going to target. It's the dogs going to the vet. It's getting <laughs> flat tires on the side of the road. That's it. I mean, it's really self-indulgent and, and quite, quite sad sometimes. Um, but uh, so we put it out there and then other people started listening, which totally caught us off guard. Um, and then the next thing we knew a lot of people were listening from all around the world and it for a little independent podcast it, it took off and we decided not to change it we got um some interest as far as like advertising and things like that we said no this is just going to be our own little thing we just we just want to keep it us and and uh we we had a get together in portland and people from canada and all around the us came uh, we, when one of our dogs passed away, you know, obviously that was all on the podcast because we talk about everything. It's very, very honest. Um, people from all around the country and Canada sent us gifts when the, after he passed away, like, oh, we're really sorry. And we were like, what is going on? We've had people come and visit us from, again, all over the place. And it's been great. And then somebody suggested... Um, maybe you should think about doing the vlog thing on YouTube, kind of keeping it the same thing because there's a possibility you might be able to make a little bit of money. Yeah. And I know a lot of people say like, oh no, you got to do it for fun. Well, we do it for fun, but if we can also get paid to do it for fun, I'm oh, in. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's and our, <laughs> yeah, our, our uh, personal channel, which had our vacation walkthrough videos was monetized because we had the views on there. So we were making like a little bit of money here and there. Mm -hmm. And we thought, well, maybe if we put a little more effort into it, we could <laughs> do a little or a better. lot more effort. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't realize how much work it was going to be. Right. So. Yes. Yeah. There is so much work behind oh. the scenes. I don't think anybody really no. realizes it when they want to get into it. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's a lot of, as with other jobs as well, like with us uh, doing, because we started this as part of our business. Our yep. main business is doing video and photo for clients. Uh, so that's how we started YouTube channel. But even uh, doing that, uh, it's so much back work of promoting oh. things, doing, uh, you know, communication with clients. So ba basically at the end, for me at least, it's like 80% of work yeah. is not related to doing photography whatsoever, right? <laughs> and, and I think the same, yeah. <laughs> it's the same with YouTube channel as well. It's yeah. so much work behind all that. We sit on the board of writers. We are <laughs> the set designers. We own a production company yeah. and we are a producer as well. You like all these hats. And the more you get into it, then musicians realize, see that a lot as well as they yeah. get involved in the business to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Very little of it is involved in your craft. The more you do, the more to get ahead, the less you deal with your craft. And that's a hard thing. Mm -hmm. And we're mostly now with the live streams. I'm, I'm liking this because we didn't think we'd ever would. But I'm almost at some points really missing the creative side. I mean, my videos, you know, when I look on our videos every day, check everything's all right. Mm -hmm. You see the live streams and they're great. And they're doing well. And then I look down for a minute, kind of feel like sad that the other <laughs> stuff that I want to get done in these videos that I want to tell stories about are kind of like getting longer and further and further away, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I, I know when I was uh, on your channel earlier, I went down to look for those videos because I mean, I'm like, well, I, I know the live stream because I've seen them, but I, I didn't really know your channel aside from that. I'm like, I know they just don't do live stream. That's not how it started. So it was fun to go and, and see some of those other videos. And I'm like, this is impressive as hell. I want to see more <laughs> of this. This is really cool. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, did you, did you get a chance of the one she brought the 80s back to Montreal since I found out now that you're a rocker guy? I haven't seen it. No, I had a song in my head. Well, not in my head. I had downloaded it about six months ago in this free one, and it's like it's got that '80s punkish style to it. Uh -huh. And I'm like, this is the every video I've ever wanted to make when I was a kid in the '80s growing up. I finally found the right track, <laughs> and it took me like six <laughs> months because I do that a lot because a musician as well. I always, almost always use music before I ever get my footage because mm -hmm. the music is my always going to be my main artist in my video. Everything and else comes You tell the story it. around them, like you have them song, and then you're like, this is yep. what I want in this part of the song. Yep, and I'll listen to it sometimes up to 500 times. That's no word oh, wow. of lie. I want every beat, every time he scratched the pick, I want every time the hi-hat accidentally sizzled a little. 
because I want to be able to lay it out that way. Good thing we have the headphones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hum songs in my head after I'm done for two weeks. I drive myself to insanity from hearing it. So that, that's great. Do the thing where I <laughs> like our intro that we did. It took us three days to make twelve seconds for that like sub yeah. subscribe and that like. It's, really, I had to go and take screenshots of me clicking the like button, and then take another screenshot of it being pushed in, and then of the sub, and then of the bell, and wow. then of the commenting. And then I did the whole thing, and there was one thing I forgot to do was the comment in the middle, and everything had to line up, so I'd go back and reshoot them all over again. Oh, no. Layer them all over. <laughs> and then I realized, oh, I have suggested videos on the side. i got to make sure they're all mine so nobody – Oh, right, them. right. So I had to go back and search for my videos to get them to show up in that section, cut them all out, line them all up so they were all down the side, <laughs> and make it three times longer than what I needed in case I needed it in the end. So that it was about is, three days to make for 12 seconds. That's pretty cool. Well, I mean, I think the great thing about it is when you see it, I always think that like when, when a, a creator can take something that's super difficult and it flows so easily that you're not stuck on looking like, oh, this looks like a lot of work because you can kind of see the hiccup here and they just, yeah. you're like, oh, that's all. You don't even think about it. It's just awesome to see. And then when you go and break it, it's like, you know, like guitar, so, or, you know, songs on guitar, solos, and you're like, Everyone's like, oh, that that that's a crazy song. And you're like, no, you need to listen to it because exactly. it is really, really well played. <laughs> it and it's the same thing. It's like looking at that and going, wow, that was a lot of work. But it just comes off. You're like, oh, that's a cool 12 seconds. Thanks. Like, <laughs> well, you're nice to like Vito Brada from uh, White Lion. When exactly. I see him play live and he did Little Fighter. Like, I mean, I think my jaw is still on the Montreal Forum floor. Right. <laughs> so unefortlessly, you know? Yeah. That then I hear him Eddie Trunk later on, ten years later, and he says that he recorded it in two takes, and I'm like, yeah. seriously? <laughs> yeah. Like I don't even want to play anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, do you record and use any of your own songs too? Do you? Not much anymore. I had I worked for a music company for years. We we're actually talking about it last night. I worked for Canada, Marshall the biggest Canada. distributor. You worked oh. for Marshall Canada, right? Yeah, that's right. A company called Jam Industries is yeah. the umbrella company. That's awesome. And they do uh, Washburn. Now they own Washburn worldwide oh, wow. and everything, and. Uh, we had 21 lines under my badge. I had Digitech, Pearl, uh, Washburn. Oh. And uh, do you know Hagstrom Guitars? I do not. They were a line that was used even by the Beatles, and they were from Sweden, and, and they faded in 1981. They're real retro, you know, kind of like the Beatle bass? Sure. And we brought them back worldwide. And there's a guy on here who has a Hagstrom Guitar headstock as his icon. So I went and checked a channel page. So I went and checked him out, and he was showing off this uh, Hagstrom acoustic, which they never had before. We introduced them, and I said, "If you look in the sound hole and you see that badge, I'm the one who designed it." That, that is so cool. <laughs> yeah. That is so cool. All yeah. right, I'll, I'll, I'll stop talking to you. I can <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> gonna We're going to be back to this yeah, topic. Yeah, right. <laughs> can get the knee squeeze here soon enough. <laughs> or an elbow, one of the two. I'm going to give it papers in front of me. So <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how that works. You're like, hey, come on. All right. All right. I get it. <laughs> oh, my God. It's <laughs> <laughs> too funny. <laughs> <laughs> this is our uh, date night. I know you guys have called uh, some of your live shows uh, date nights or whatever, but we do our podcast and we always kind of jokingly call that our date night because it's like the hour that we automatically spend together talking right. to each other about ourselves, which again, super us. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, but like I think a lot of couples, even though you spend all day together or maybe you don't like we don't see each other all day. So <laughs> we have this funny thing now where we save stories yeah. for the podcast because almost you want to see that reaction. Yeah. That's yeah. a good idea, actually. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's a really <laughs> great idea. Yeah. Well, if you start talking and go, oh, oh, wait, never mind. I'll tell, I'll tell you, I'll tell you when we record. Save it for the podcast. Yeah, save it for the podcast. <laughs> that is such a great idea. Yeah. Well, well done, guys. That is very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Every it's light so, went off. And, and it's so raw right away, yeah. you know, and I think oh, maybe yeah. that's why people catch on on it because yeah. it's not played on. It's it's actual how it is, you know. We even yeah, worked side yeah. by side all day. And I mean, there's stuff that's amazing. Yeah. I'll tell two days later, you know, because you get lost in the moment, busy, but that is a great idea. Yeah, it's 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 fun. It's and the nice thing with the the podcast is we don't edit it at all. What what gets recorded is what goes out. So you you'll hear stories uh being told and then <laughs> one of us will have a reaction like, wait, what? What, what happened? And, <laughs> and then it's like this, uh, you know, this recorded real like, wait, well, next time that happens, don't do that, you know. Oh, that is 
it, it's that's a good job. That really shows that you put a lot of work in your craft. An idea like that is unbelievable. I'm really, that's so amazing. <laughs> well, that was all we had to offer since we we don't have like a podcast. We're not going to say like, we don't give reviews or do this and that, that it's like, unless, unless it's just us, it'd be really boring if we just sat there and we're like, yeah, got some coffee today. All, all right. right. Talk to you later. <laughs> you know, we had to have some gimmick. I don't know. Already after meeting you for a couple of minutes, I think you could even make a sound of going uh, a story about going to get coffee would be interesting. <laughs> yes, I have a feeling. Yeah. So I don't think you have many down points in your story. I'd, I'd probably end up making some ridiculous in innuendo out of it, and then it would turn into something totally different. Right. And then Annalise. I would Annalise complain is, about getting coffee all day long. Right. <laughs> then she'll just look at me and go, "Nope." <laughs> nope. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. <laughs> Oh my god, it's amazing. The more we do this, the more we realize how many people are like us. <laughs> I, know. I know. We thought they were odd ones, but yeah. I, mean, yeah, yeah. I don't feel so no. special anymore. <laughs> oh, that's good. And For it's a funny, Saturday. You drive to you find your kind. You're like, oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about yourselves uh, before you started uh, your this channel and podcasts and, and the previous channels that you uh, mentioned. Uh, what were you doing before? Where are you from? Go ahead. <laughs> well, we're both from California and uh, I think actually we were born in the hood. We were both born in Compton. No, you were born in Compton. <laughs> I was born around the corner in Linwood. Oh, so we were straight out of Compton. <laughs> 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 but we both moved, like our families lived there when we were born, but they both moved out of LA and up to Northern California, I think within like the first year of our lives. So we joke about being born in the hood, but then we quickly moved out. So we don't actually know yeah. or we remember. Still, we still claim it though because of our birth certificates. We're <laughs> like, that's where we were born. <laughs> it's it's a badge of honor. It's, bad. it's got a story behind it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then we both grew up in like small little Northern California towns. So oh, that is so cool. I but, love Northern California, by the way. I, I have been through it twice. Oh, very cool. And it's some of the most beautiful scenery. It like is. it's beautiful. And it gets overlooked so much with the LA scene, you know, and that's mm -hmm. too bad because there's a whole nother world going on up there. Uh, yeah. Like, Vineyards. Yeah. We, actually, because you're a music guy, and they're going to kill me now for bringing it back up again. I <laughs> was there once with Seymour Duncan. Oh, very cool. Because <laughs> that's where the up, uh, and then we went up through, and we took extra two days and drove up after that. So yeah, I have a bunch of buddies that worked for, and a few that still work for Mesa Boogie too. Oh wow. Yeah, they're one of the my. We didn't do them, and I love Marshall. They were great to be yeah. home, but Mesa Boogie always has a special. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I'm done. Get from the <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, I can <laughs> see all the eyes, and I'm not even looking. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting squeezed again. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so go. So so before the podcast. Slowly wearing back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, Northern California, Compton. I'm, I'm really good now. <laughs> um, I actually, uh, from when I was like high school, moved to LA and did actually live there for about eight years before I moved back up to uh, Northern California. And I've been working for the most part at uh, Skywalker Sound, which is the post production division of Lucasfilm, for 21 years. Wow. Wow. And um, I did take a break for a little while, moved to Portland and did the most Portland thing you can do. I worked at a comic book store and owned a coffee shop for a few years. Oh my God, you were right out of Portlandia. Yes. Like, oh. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. It's, it's hilarious. I'm it's, the trifecta of nerd. Right yeah. Right but if you're going to do it, do it right. That's oh, always right. been my oh, philosophy, yeah. you know? We went to go visit Portland and Annalise took me to the coffee shop that she owned and we walk, we walk, we're walking there and I'm like, this is, now, Portlandia is not a joke. I mean, it's for, <laughs> that's exactly how it is. Across the street was a shop of a lady that knits caps and gloves and that was the whole store. And I'm like, <laughs> seriously, and she, had, she was making a living. I'm like, how does this happen? Right. There were a kitty corner and then down the street was the old school video store and down the other street was uh, the ho the horse brass pub, and then on the other corner is a Montessori school that teaches Montessori teachers how to teach Montessori. Oh so my god! It's yeah. totally Portland. <laughs> that is living the life like that. <laughs> that uh, <laughs> but, but what an experience! So just the same though. I mean, it's, it must have been. I, I loved it. I uh, love Portland, and uh, I think I just needed a break. Like I said, I've been working for Lucasfilm for twenty one years now. I actually just got a statue. A couple of months ago, my 20-year at Lucasfilm statue. It's a C-3PO. 
No way. <laughs> Pretty cool. You don't have it close, do you? I'll, I'll I go do. Get it. I can get it. Did you? Yes, it? please. Yeah. You? <laughs> you have to show that. So it's it's really cool because um, after we met, we met we met later in our life, and after we met. Um, we were going, uh, the new, the last three Star Wars movies were coming out and I was a huge Star Wars fan and I grew up mainly where Skywalker sound is out in West Marin. And right. there, I mean, it was, she's like, Hey, do you want to go see the new Star Wars film? Oh and my God. That is so Congratulations. amazing. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you made it look like an Oscar to make us feel like super proud or whatever. And my name's little engraved over there. So. It was so really cool. cool. <laughs> it was at the theater That's at Skywalker <laughs> with uh, Kathleen Kennedy, the head of Lucasfilm, right? Yeah. And she was like, I, I mean, it was, it, there's so much like a family out there. It's it's crazy. So Annalise says, do you want to see Star Wars at Skywalker Ranch? And it's like a little tear <laughs> came from my eye. And I'm like, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Oh, my, a you mean we're Pearl Jam recorded too? Yeah, I'll go. So <laughs> that is I have to bring so it back amazing. to music. I just had to throw sorry, that Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so anyway, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't know what was to say. You were saying so 21 years at Skywalker. Oh, and then, um, yeah, so I moved back to the Bay Area from Portland or whatever, and I made, like, a phone call, like, hey, do you guys have any work or whatever? I'm thinking about moving back. And they're like, oh, yeah, just come on back. And they just, like, reinstilled my email, reinstilled my uh, phone extension, and just gave me my old desk back. And I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> Thank you. All the same It people. was really like, weird. Nothing changes. Yeah, nothing changes. <laughs> and people say that, I guess. They, they are, it is like a, a lot of company, big companies will say that, but I guess there it does really feel like a family. I've heard that before other people, like, you know, talking about going there and stuff. They said it's got such mm -hmm. an amazing vibe. Right. It, it's so, it's actually like the actual um, core employees is actually very small. Like we get a lot of uh, LA visitors and editors and mixers and things like that. But the actual core essence of Skywalker is actually a very small group. So, I mean, I think that we've all known each other for so long. So when you wow. say like, Hey, you know, I was thinking about coming back. They're like, Oh yeah, we'll make space for you or whatever. So that's amazing. amazing. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm assuming you've met the man. I have. <laughs> <laughs> And what's he's he like? Out there. He's actually very, very nice and very, very quiet. Really? And um, I think one of those weird things that no one knows so much is two things. He doesn't have a great sense of humor. <laughs> so don't try to be sarcastic and make jokes with him because he doesn't go for that. <laughs> really? <laughs> <Jokes> self. <laughs> and also he uh, very much loves his kids and his, um, which are now adults and, uh, there's nothing more like genuine and awesome than like seeing him have lunch with his daughter at the table next to you. And they're just so like into having lunch together and chit chat with each other. And it's really, really cool. So like he's, he's the one who really kept it like a family vibe. That's so cool. Yes. Yeah. What an experience. I mean, uh, one of the greatest companies in the world to work at. See, that's what this, I, this, this is a prime example of what we like doing, what we're doing. Yes. You know, this just stuff like this, I mean, is unbelievable that we would never get a chance to know. You know, we get to see your work, you talk about what you're doing, it's all great. But these extra stories just helps connect so much more. And there's so many interesting stories people have. Yeah, I would never guess. That's it's amazing. Thank you for sharing yeah. that with us. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were, I was kind of speechless just listening. Yes, I know. I know. It's a weird little job at a weird little place that, like, you know, when when you go out and people ask you what you do, like, you'd never really know what to say because you have a hard time explaining. Oh, I make wires for the engineering department and for this post production company that actually is part of Lucasfilm. And then you like their eyes have glazed over, and you're like, yeah. I, I yeah. work for an engineering team. Let's just. That's when I jump in and I say, you know, Lucasfilm, all the studios in there, <laughs> she wired. Right. <laughs> <laughs> she put it all together so they could do their jobs. And then they're like, oh, that's cool. Right. And I, I'm like super proud and super stoked on it. So I'm always walking around like, you know what my wife does? Right. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> Annalise, Annalise, come over here and tell them what you do. And she's like, why? I'm like, do you know them? I'm like, no, I don't know them. They're waiting for their table. Tell them what you do. <laughs> oh my God. It's fun too, because Annalise was talking about uh, Mr. Lucas not being super sarcastic or getting sarcasm. And Annalise is like, loves to like these little sarcastic jokes and all these things. And one of the first times, well, the first time we went to Jamaica together, I mean, this is huge generalization, but for the most part, the culture 
isn't super sarcastic. They're very straightforward. They they say what they feel, they say what they mean, and that's it. Yeah. So Annalise made this joke to one of the bartenders once because she got a few drinks and then uh, she went up for another and she goes, oh, I, I guess you guys are gonna run out of ice. You know, like the joke, like I'm having all these drinks and they're like, no, no, it's okay. We have plenty of ice. It's <laughs> oh, <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, that's not. Oh, for <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be um, funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's cute. Keep your jokes to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sarcasm at home. That's uh, that's your own time. <laughs> for sure. You explain what you do. <laughs> uh, well, I um, so I have my cosmetology license. I did hair for a while. And um, now I'm a ground, groundskeeper for the city of San Francisco. I used to uh, work out at Candlestick Park when the Giants and the Niners worked. Oh, wow. wow. I played out there. Talk and about now, that. So now I have a bunch of soccer fields or for uh, others, football fields that I take care of. <laughs> and how long have you been doing it for? 23 years. 23 years, man. Yeah. I thought I, I just, I, I was tired of, uh, of, of doing people's hair mainly because being <laughs> um, being a, a a straight guy in that business most <laughs> I ended up being like a uh, like an armchair psychologist for a bunch of people and most of my clientele were women and they were all great but I found that it was a lot of women that weren't super happy and wanted the attention of somebody. And right. it just got to be a little bit draining. And I'm like, I, I need to take a break. So I, I took this job and I thought I'd do it for like five or six years. It's all outside, something totally different. And I fell in love with it. And I'm like, well, this gives me time to do the, you know, pursue music and do the other things I want to do. And I get to be outside all day. So you still uh, get to do hair. <laughs> I still do. Yeah. He still it's, cuts my hair. I've done yeah. so I knew Xenny was going towards there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I tried to cut my own too. Got but, a lot of personal yeah. hair yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Well, when you guys visit, I'll be more than happy to do hair. <laughs> oh my god almighty, that's right there alone is our <laughs> I've been looking for a new haircut. Yeah. So yes, it would be some, some suggestions for sure. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, come and, out. Can, can you talk about your band days a little bit? Sure. I, it's, it's, it's related to his backstory. And that one is cool. <laughs> <laughs> so ah. I'm not in trouble. I don't need to squeeze. <laughs> okay, <hands up. laughs> Well, you can squeeze. It's all right, but I'll still have the story. So. He's like, squeeze all day, and we're going to talk about <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will just get it to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let him get it out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Sure. What would you like to know? <laughs> Uh, I don't know from the beginning. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I'll give up. So um, I was, as a young kid, my dad played guitar, <clears throat> played very, very well. And okay. I, as a young kid, I was, uh, I got into music from my, my parents. And let's see, so bands like um, Motley Crue, uh, Hanoi Rocks, I guess Rat, um, we should, Def, Def Leppard. We should say that Neil's actually named after Neil Diamond. Yeah, I'm named after Neil Diamond. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, so those bands, like, I guess we're around the time I was in like eighth grade. They were just starting, and I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> guys can grow out their hair, wear makeup, and play guitar, and I chicks know. dig it. Yeah. I am in. <laughs> That's all I needed. That's what I've been waiting for. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was it was funny. It wasn't until like my mid to late thirties that I realized, as a young boy, and there's nothing wrong with it, but as a young boy, my room was plastered with pictures of guys in drag. I'm like, no wonder <laughs> my parents thought I had. You know, they were like, what is, what is going on? I'm like, I think it's. And then I ended up become, becoming a cosmetologist. But um, <laughs> yeah, it, so so that's how it started. And then all I wanted to do was play bass because I love Nikki Six. Oh, <laughs> bass player. And yeah, and then my dad said, "No, you're gonna play a real instrument." Just joke, bad joke. Just, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Uh, and uh, got me a guitar, and that was it. I I just started playing guitar, and then um, uh, became became a singer in a band because the the singer that was part of this band wasn't wasn't good. Not that I'm any good. And that was it. It kind of took off from there. So I played in a bunch of glam bands and that, well, not a bunch, but a few glam bands and then later progressed into like that grungy rock thing. And yeah. And, yeah. Did you play a lot like the LA scene where you, where, is that where you kind not of? Not much in LA. Played a little bit in Seattle, played a lot in the Bay Area. Okay. Uh, and at that time it was nice because the Bay Area scene here in, near San Francisco was huge. You know? Yeah. yeah. Had, I mean, a lot of bands were coming out of that way and they, that's amazing. Yeah. You seen it at a great time too. Oh, the it was, it was, here. 
my best friend was working at the studio where Metallica and Santana used to rehearse. So okay. it was, it, and, and we, like, I mean, this was also the days when Metallica was starting. So say like Green Day and all them. So we, Death Angel and all those bands, we'd hang, yep. be hanging out with these bands, like not knowing who they would become. We were just all kids. They were just a little bit older than us. And wow. then the, the next thing you know, it's like, oh, so-and-so got signed. Oh, cool. You know, that was a big thing. Everyone needed to get wow. signed. And that, that was it. You know, the guys from Vane got signed and uh, Jet Boy got signed. You know, it, it was like, oh, we're, we're next. Didn't happen that way. <laughs> well, Death Angel, if I remember right, the drummer was really young. They had to pull him out. They had to wait for two months for high school to end or something. He was like 15. Yeah. He was they were all pretty much family, and they had to wait for him to finish school before they could go out on tour. Yeah, there was there was a, right. a period of time that I had when my hair was really long that I looked like a younger version of the lead singer of Death Angel. So really? I used to get into all these clubs at like 17 years old because they thought I was ham. So I'm like, yeah, I'll wear black leather. That's fine. I can do this. So it was <laughs> it gets great. Me in the club, especially. Yeah, it was funny when like, going back to one of the main clubs in the city when I turned 21 and going up and getting a drink. I'm like, don't you want to see my ID? And they're like, no, you've been coming here for years. I'm like, no, look my ID. And they looked and like, wait. You, you just turned 21. We've been <laughs> serving you for like four years. I'm like, yeah, I know. It's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's like one bar tent where I used to go to. I, I grew up in a rural area and I used to go in all the time. And one time I showed my fake ID and he goes, I get it. You've been 18 for the last <laughs> four years. So we move on. You know, like <laughs> and you played, now, you played uh, like what kind of music? My understanding is that you played heavier music, right? Well, heavier. I did. I love the '80s rock. I mean, that okay. was always my kind of goal. But I also went in the. I was on in the heavier as well. When I got to Montreal, I was that rural boy who did everything. I did some hunting, did some working on tractors, all this stuff. But I also wanted to get out. Like the day I left for college, my sister and I were only eleven months apart because I'm adopted. Uh -huh. We left at the same time, and my sister cried for an hour, and I was laughing and sticking, giving the middle finger <laughs> out the window. Like it was like I had won the lottery that day. I didn't care if I starved to death in Montreal; I was still leaving. So, so yeah, what, what were like your favorite bands in in the in the eighties, early nineties? Oh, I was a lot of the glam was like I say, White Line will always be one. Of, I always find them one of the most underrated bands that ever came out of the eighties. Sure. But I'm a big Vito Brada fan more yeah. than anything. Oh, it's amazing! I, I I used to go to the Nam show. And oh, in okay. Anaheim, yeah. And I would be one night. I was sitting there, and there was uh, we got these shows, of course. And that's the night I got to meet Extreme. It was their first time back together in like what ten years. Nice. And we're sitting there, and another band came up called, which I had never really heard much of, Disturbed. And I was like, eh. yeah. You know, there were <laughs> only five hundred people. You could sit your beer on the table, you know, on the stage. Right. Nobody around. It was the House of Blues at Disney. So I go upstairs, and I sit at the bar, and there's this pudgy kind of. Do you guys mind? This is like a two-minute story. I hope that's no, not no, no. I, I would <laughs> love it. No, not at all. But this, it was an amazing time because it was one of my favorite <laughs> music moments. <laughs> we haven't heard it. Yeah, no, I'm into. I, I'm so in. Yeah, <laughs> continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> Once it gets going, nobody has heard it except for me. Okay. <laughs> so I sit at the bar, and there's this kind of a pudgier guy, long hair. You could tell he's been through the ringer a bit, you know, but still playing. And we start talking. We talked for two hours, and he was talking about playing music, and now he's with the younger band, and he kind of he said they're a bunch of idiots, but you know, you got to pay the bills. And after it was all done, and we talked about mowing the lawn and kids and that, a girl I know that was a publicist said, oh, you had a great time with Eric. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I kind of forgot his name. And she was more put back that I didn't, didn't stand out to me. And I said, she said, well, yeah, you know who he was. And I'm like, no. You remember the band Testament? Oh, yeah. They were supposed to be bigger than Metallica until they fell through. Well, yeah. the drummer, Joey Clemente, is who I always wanted. Not Joey Clemente. I forget his name now. He wanted to be in the He was my idol drummer. Okay. Ended up, it was the guitar player, Eric Peterman. We'd been shooting the shit for two hours, and I never wow. even knew who he was. Wow. And it was so amazing <laughs> to get to talk without getting gushy or, oh, I love right. what you do, to really just get to know him more. And after that, his band came in, but it was after I offered. I had tickets for the Sabian show that night, and Santana mm -hmm. was playing, and Sabian always puts on the big, big show. Sure. Canadian company, by the way, from Aductic oh, Nebraska. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. Okay. They used to be part of Zildjian, and they split up because of the okay, yeah, yeah. So I said, well, I, I had invited him to come with me. So after I did, he said, well, I kind of got to bring the van, the band. And I thought, okay, that's cool. Not realizing <laughs> what the band was like until we got them in the, 
<laughs> and the owner of our company, which is one of the biggest music companies in the world, his son was with us, who's going to take over this business. So we get a van because we don't have enough room for all of us. So there's this driver and then the owner's son. And then behind me is my drum tech manager. And then this band. So we start taking off. And of course, typical California scenarios, midnight, the palm trees are flying by. Sure. This singer reaches over the, the, the driver and turns up this like death metal channel to, well, 26. I think he found a new number. <laughs> right. And he starts screaming and their heads are bouncing. And the driver says, I can't do this. And he turns it down. The singer grabs the volume, cranks it again. The driver goes to touch it. He slaps him on the hand like that. Says, "Don't touch it anymore." And then they all go into helicopter hair. So there's five of them like, <laughs> and the, 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 my drum manager's laughing because things have gone so bad, and he's getting hit with shots of blonde bleach hair, kind of. <laughs> Seconds like that. I'm roaring because I know how much crap I'm into when I get back because of the sounds <laughs> in the car. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was just a typical nam night like yeah. just the most bizarre because we're so corporate they're so liberal it's one of the weirdest businesses you'll ever be into in your life yeah yeah you always have one foot in each side so <laughs> it, that I've, I've never been the show i was supposed to go to a show a friend of ours started dirtbag clothing and so they were down there all the time because they uh they, like, who do they do now? They do like three days grace and slip knot and, wow. um, and it's just clothing, but he always had tickets and he's like, Hey, do you guys want to come down? And one year we were going to, but he's like, it's the weirdest thing because like, it's, you have these two opposing forces that come together yeah. in this real symbiotic way. But at the same time, you can tell there's this weird tension too. Yeah. And then you have everybody come in. That's like excited to be there and they want to see this and that. And it's, 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 he says it's bizarre. It is. You never know. It's almost like you got to. It's great, but you got to breathe a sigh of relief when you got back in the plane. You're like, okay, I made it through without screwing right. up because it literally is that easy to do it there. And I remember one morning at our hotel we stayed at, you could go downstairs and the pool is like, say, on the third floor, and that's where you could smoke because, uh, or otherwise you'd go inside. And I always see these weird. There's always so many weird people there. Like real. I mean, let's face it. Most bands are eccentric. Oh yeah. And the worst ones are the ones that are doing a little good, but not there yet, because they want to be seen. They're they're cock of the walk. They're all chest out. They were sure. And it was this hus this guy and girl, and you could tell they've been fighting for hours. And it was straight out of a Spinal <laughs> Tap movie. Like I wanted to vomit <laughs> listening to them. And he's like, "No, but babe, you want me to pick between the band and you? You know my guitar. You know it's a part of me. You know it's the guitar <laughs> and underwear, babe." And it's like you're not really saying this in 2007, are we? Like. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Did I go in a time warp? You know, is this? Oh, like, that's great. I just want to live. I just want to rock, yeah. man. <laughs> you want me to take you? You want me to take my guitar? You know, you want me to make love to you? you want me to make love to my guitar? You know, it was just so fun. <laughs> this went on for the whole cigarette. I couldn't smoke fast enough. Like I that's thought about quitting halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, oh, yeah. if you have two seconds, I'll just show you. We, unfortunately, we did this last night. Well, did just touch up on it a little bit. So yeah. today, since we oh, guys cool. are more interested in music, you can uh, show a little bit more about that. There's Paul Stanley. <laughs> yep. He was an endorsee for Washburn. He changes every year, whichever one gives him the most is money. That, that year is was that Kerry King over there? Uh, what's that? Kerry King? Yep, that's Kerry King when they Hi. launched the Marshall Amp. That's uh, so cool. This was my cousin's very first concert. This is Dave Mustaine at the back of the Montreal Oh, okay. Center. Nice. And my cousin was 19, and that was his first concert. Was backstage with five other bands. It was that Gigantor? Okay. He couldn't even hide his goofy smile. I swear no, to God, no. he pushed his ears off his head at one point. That's great. Uh, Canadian show. Uh, you know, uh, Kids in the Hall. Have you ever heard yeah. of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the, some of the guys from Kids in the Hall here uh, as well. And the TV show Degrassi, where um, that rapper, what's his name, Drake, got his start? Yeah. Right, right, right. That was Isn't a Canadian my... show. I was a product advisor for five years with them. Nice. And um, the drummer from um, the drummer from Nickelback that took over, Daniel Adair, that was oh, my right, son. Right. And Dave Martone, he's a guitarist from around Seattle, I believe. He's one of like okay. the ultimate underground shredders. Um, Michael Anthony from Van Halen. Right. That was my sister from uh, In Excess, the drummer. Okay. Uh, there's a great guitar player. If you ever hear, get a chance to listen to him and singer, he's from Canada called Colin James. All right. And he was big in the 80s. He, had, he got noticed by uh, Keith Richards. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was busking in Montreal on the, on the subway streets. And uh, the singer from Extreme and Nuno Batten Court. 
He uh he that's the night they played the Hoots of Blues and he actually had a fractured foot and wasn't supposed to fly. Oh wow. It was their first time together in 10 years, and he flew down and did the whole show. And when he came off stage, that's where I caught him because he fell in my arms. I just happened to be walking <laughs> through. So I guess we got intimate for our first time. Right. <laughs> this was at the NAMM show. That was the drummer, the drum tech that was in the car that got the mouth full of hair. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> and uh, Michael Mangini, one of the fastest drummers in the world. And yeah. Jimmy DeGrasso, who played with Alice Cooper. He was on Wayne's World with Alice Cooper when he was on. Oh, okay. Yeah. I always forget their names. Seven Seven Dust. Yeah, yeah, that was the drummer for them. They were all the drum guys that were over for a visit. So Seven Dust. I think their manager is the with the old bass player for Twisted Sister. Yes. Yeah, that is true because he was there and they were talking about that. Wow, you yeah. have a good. <laughs> 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 Do you ever hear of a band from the eighties called Overkill? Oh, of course. That's the singer, and his song was the very first song I ever taught myself to play on guitar, and I get to meet him all those years later. That's cool. We got to play a couple of chords while he sang it, and my 10-year-old son was with me at the time. So Wow, that's cool. We have a Montreal Heavy Metal Fest now every year, and like there's uh, ACDC's been into it. Uh, they play for three days. It's just Metallica continuous bands. Was Metallica year, was last year, yeah. Iron Maiden. So uh, it's grown pretty big. These are the guys from Warrant. That was when they got back together, just before right. what's-his-name committed suicide. Lane, uh, not, not Lane State, Lane, uh, Janie Lane. Yes, it was right on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, it uh, seems like everybody that has Lane in their name is committing suicide. Lane Stanley. Yeah, I know, I know. It seems uh, that's an awful thing. It seems awfully contagious. Anthrax. <laughs> yep, that was side stage with my sister. You guys are a bunch of nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Totally. <laughs> we can probably it. Do this for the well, people in the hours. chat are enjoying it. There are lots of metal and heavy metal fans, and Nickelback and. <laughs> Metallica and oh my, people are enjoying it. This so. was the one I was <laughs> saving till the end. You, this is uh, Jim Marshall with my oh, son. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he used to come in every year, at least once a year, and we put him in this hotel. And he hated, he loved cigars and single malt scotch. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and he went to Montreal because he could get Cubans. <laughs> so everybody that I worked with hated cigar smoke. So nobody wanted to sit with him all afternoon while he smoked his cigars. Right. That's I'm not even a cigar smoker, but hey, when in Rome. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. So I literally spent three days with him just sitting there all afternoon hearing his stories. And he'd be like, oh, I remember when Jimi Hendrix first came in and wanted me to try and build this amp and wow. Peter Townsend. And he, he was incredible. He was like your grandfather, but really cool, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Except really cool. <laughs> So, yeah, so that was some of the, I just had, that's some of the ones, a lot of them, I don't even know where they are anymore, but that's just some of the few that I have left. That's so cool. How old were you when you started playing? Uh, I was uh, 11. Oh, nice. My dad was actually, once again, East Coast, everybody almost plays. Right, okay. Bluegrass guy, so he played, he had a Gibson, he has a Gibson J45, and then oh, he nice. has a mandolin and a fiddle and. You know, kind of all those. So he wasn't a big fan of my music choices. But... Especially with drums, as yeah. we were talking yesterday. I had no basement in my house, so I literally practiced drums for six hours a day in my bedroom, which is the upstairs part of the kitchen. So my father lost more weight when I played drums than ever in his whole life combined from walking to get away from it. So <laughs> that is true. He lost probably 40, 50 pounds from me playing. That's and then great. He He's the like, the I'm out of here. Shed, so then the neighbors got to hear that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the small town, there's 80 guitar players. There was one bass player, and then there was no drummer. And literally, I went over to uh, this guy his friend's father who drank a lot. So I actually brought over beer when I was 16. I went and got a friend to buy it, brought over, gave him two cases and ended up getting him drunk and bought his drum set for 200 bucks <laughs> from a country band and stuck it out before he changed his mind. That's a rock and roll story right yep. there. And I said, if you want, <laughs> we're going to have a band, let's finally have a band. So I taught myself how to play. That's great. Oh, that's, that's great. funny. All right. I'll stop talking about music again. Yeah, yeah, I can say <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I know it was a lot of music, but that was really fun talking with you about that. But, uh, oh, oh hey. no, you're not going to talk about the guitars that he has behind? Oh, like, that's coming after. Okay. I'm trying to be good. Don't push it. <laughs> He's trying to break it up in a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm 
try to be disciplined here. <laughs> In little doses. Yes. Right. 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 So, actually, it was interesting where we met. I I, I thoroughly enjoyed all the stories of, uh, about music and, and the time that Andrew was uh, working at Jam Industries because it's so interesting to to hear behind the scenes. The same probably with you guys with uh, you working at Lucasfilms. Uh, it's uh, it's you know to hear how it is behind because oftentimes we don't get to see that. Actually, uh, just one last little thing, because you were saying about the corporate side, mm -hmm. and her favorite story, everybody's is, because we dealt with a lot with dealers, and I love the dealers, because they're so eccentric. They all were guitar players who never made it, so they decided yeah. to open a music store. But they but they, they knew everything. They oh, yeah. knew everything. Except for running a business. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> they have no, and they didn't even want to hear about it, like, you know, <laughs> and there yeah. was this old guy. The bigger music stores, of course, are popping up. In Canada, here was Long and McQuaid, and they were, you know, knocking out all. And there's this guy, Vic Lillo. He was like, at the time, 70 years old. He had a bow tie on. <laughs> and everybody couldn't stand, but everybody went in to buy their picks and stuff because he was such a character. Uh huh. And I loved calling him, and he had this energy. He was in Edmonton, Alberta. He'd be, Good morning, Vic. It's Andrew from Jam Energy. Like, hey there, hi there, ho there. Today's a day for a sale today. And he was talking like that all the time. He was like right out of a 1950s movie. I couldn't get enough of this guy. I would call him with stuff that wasn't even a problem just so I could talk to him. Like, oh, that's great. So he had all these inappropriate holidays. Like he had, instead of Native American days, which wouldn't even still made sense. Mm -hmm. He had sales that were called Indian days where he literally have a tomahawk dress on the oh. whole head to the dun 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 like anybody else would have been arrested. You, you know, right. like you could never do that this day and age. He was the yeah. ultimate non-PC guy. Oh, that's but so everybody funny. loved him because he was so genuine. Right. And he had a book about this thick, and he would always say, Now, do you have a little birdie or a puppy at home? And you know, like, oh, I have a dog. Well, what's that little puppy's name? And when's his birthday? He would write in this book, and every year you would get a birthday card for your pet. Oh my god! It was wow. so eccentric. That's yeah, it was so nice, great. but he did it every year without fail. Usually, after the pet died, some people said they still got letters for a decade. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so like the, my dog would now be twenty six. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I'm still getting a card, you know. So the pinnacle comes. We're in my sales reps in Ontario, and he has to do this big territory. He's a small store. He can't get there very often. This guy adds literally about a 15 foot section to his store and he drives my sales rep into the ground saying, you gotta come see what I done. I'm growing, I'm growing. He goes, I wanna knock the rest of them out. I'm too big now, you gotta come see it. <laughs> so finally my sales rep, who's a very shy 40s guy, partly balding, a little pudgy, says, okay, I'll be there in a month. He lands in Edmonton and that's one of the smaller planes because he left from a smaller place. So you walk just down, there's no big, you know, I forget what you call it now. Yeah. It's seven o'clock in the morning. His foot hits the floor of uh, the tarmac and he hears a loud whistle. This guy had shown up with the local high school band to greet our sales drum. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and continues to march him along the tarmac <laughs> through the airport and out because the Canadian side they didn't have security. So everybody thinks of like the president's visiting Canada or yeah. some like local ambassador. Everybody's like looking, wanting to take pictures. They think they're going to catch the scoop of the century. And it was just our sales rep going to see this bloody store. <laughs> that's that's great. Hi there. Though. Oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that story. It's always my favorite one from when I worked there. I always, I always, I always wonder how he's doing still. I love that part of that business. The people was so amazing. That's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah, it was always funny when you go into music shops though, because yeah, they were either owned by or they were all, I'd, I'd say ex musicians, but musicians that didn't realize they were ex musicians, meaning yes. they weren't in band still. But they had the answers to like how to make it and why they didn't make it, and they're yep. about to make it, and that everybody that made it stinks, and they don't know why they made it. You know, and it's like, oh my god, I I just need a set of guitar strings. And then it was like, well, what do you use? And it's like, well, I'd like some GHS, you know, custom lights. And they'd be like, no, 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 you should use these materials. And it's like, no, just give me the strings I want. That's all. I just want to buy my strings. Go put them on my guitar. I don't yeah. need your, you know. Uh. You had to beg for their business almost, you know. Yeah. It's like, sell it to you. Yeah. Really, I do want those strings. Yeah. <laughs> what picks do you use? Oh, I use like the green Dunlop. No, no, no. You should be using, okay. All right. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's garbage. It's garbage. Yeah. yeah, right. You should be using teardrop picks. I, no, I don't want to. Just leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. That happens Sorry, to you. Ladies. All the time. That happens to me all the time. <laughs> 
Oh, and Elise, do you play any uh, instruments? Or I don't. Instrument? I uh, took a flute in like uh, middle school. There's an inappropriate joke there. Just I know. So you know. <laughs> I'm just being, see, how good I'm being, you see? Just so you know. I know. It's like I don't know. It's like I don't know what I can say and not say. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna see, be good. See, that's gonna get a nope. <laughs> so go on. So you mastered in flute. No. <laughs> <laughs> my actually what's funny is um I actually really liked it and I was pretty good at it and my uh, mom made me no nope, stop <laughs> 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 my, <mom, laughs> my mom made me quit because I stopped doing like my homework and stuff so because I would just practice and she was like no no not having that. <laughs> so many jokes. Back to the books. <laughs> right there, I can see his eyes. Oh He's holding uh, back. Not, yeah. so I'm, I'm squeezing much. my own leg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but you, you've talked about maybe wanting to learn uh, right. piano. This uh, Hello Kitty guitar is actually mine. Oh, <laughs> that's what I was gonna ask. Well, yeah, with a pink color. <laughs> Oh. Well, it was a gift, and uh, a, I knew a guitar prodigy actually in Portland, and he was going to teach me how to play. And then it, I ended up moving back, and I never got my lessons. Oh. So. Then she met me, and she's like, "I don't want you to teach me." <laughs> <laughs> she's like, "I don't need to learn every Poison song ever." <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're good. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, the guitar looks pristine. You'll yeah. have to get onto it, though. It looks untouched. <laughs> yeah, I think I've played it like three times right. just to, to mess around with it. But right. right. He mostly just takes pictures with it. Oh, yeah. Well, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, right. That's it. That's it. You still might pick it up, though, one day. You never know. Yeah. There's yeah. still time. There's still yeah. time. Yeah. I guess I would say so for sure. Hey, that could be your new job at Lucas Films. You could be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she could start doing the guitar. Well, I think, uh, right. What I technically do is um, I do the wiring, you know, like for the studio. So like I build the studios and fix the studios and maintain the studios. And so um, every other wire person that I know in the Bay Area or mostly in L.A., they're all ex-musicians. I'm the yeah. only one I know that isn't. So there's still time for me. That's right. <laughs> exactly. I'm already halfway there. I already have the retirement part all done, so I can just backtrack to the so beginning. So a lot of them were like ex roadies and stuff like that a lot. Um, most of them, like the guy that I work with every day, um, used to be in a signed band. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now, and now is a wire guy. So I mean. Yeah, it's one of my progression though into it. I could get that. I could see what I could Because you need to fix your own gear, make your own guitar cables, mic cables. So it's it it is like if you don't know how to solder your own guitar cable, then you have to buy a new one or ask somebody. So it makes sense to figure out how to do it yourself. <laughs> and Which until you also... get a big and even signed, your still money is tight. Like every cent yeah. counts. So, yeah. yeah, and and it was so cool when after we met and I was still playing in the band and I'd need a guitar cable and Annalise would say, well, I'll make it for you. What color do you want? And I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> She's of course I want purple or pink. So if you can make that happen. That's, so like all the cables that we had for like the studio in here, the podcast yeah. studio or any of my guitar stuff or speaker stuff, like Annalise is like, yeah, just tell me the length you want it and I'll custom make it. And I'm like, this is the most amazing thing ever. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't know you know it's 25. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, she made a cable for uh, for my tattoo. Uh, a friend of mine does tattoos. He's done my tattoos. And he wanted to try this different kind of cable for his uh, tattoo needle. Okay. And she made that for him, too. She's like, yeah, I can do that. That's yeah. Fine. That's cool. Yeah. It was fun. Wow. What's really funny, though, is uh, for our podcast and our home and or the vlog, Neil takes care of all the tech. He's the total tech. Like, I don't do anything in the house. And it's an ongoing joke at work that um they're like oh so what do you edit the thing the podcast on something like, i don't know neil does that they are like neil does it i'm like yeah neil does everything home. like he gets under the house and runs the cables and hooks everything up it's his oh, really? board i don't touch anything it's like he runs all the tech at home because he loves it and it's like the doctor's kids are always sick i do that at work all day long yeah. and so i come home and i just take off the hat and it's all neil it's well, that's good it's fun too because I'll I'll ask her like, hey, can we get a splitter for this, this, and this? And then you know, Annalise will say, well, what is it you want to do? And I'm like, well, I need to I need to run these 16 things over here. And she's like, well, can you just run that, that, and that? And I'm like, oh, I guess so. She's like, yeah, I'll make that cable. That's fine. I'm like, oh, okay, oh, yeah. cool, oh, right. Yeah, it's, it's great. 
she's a keeper, my friend. You'll be very good to her. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> For so many reasons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not, uh, yeah. <laughs> we're not going to go back to flu practice again. Yeah. <laughs> that much flu, oh, sorry. <laughs> and likes it. I mean, I was okay. I'll stop. I'm getting <laughs> squeezed. I'm getting. I'm getting abused. <laughs> and I'm sorry. I had. I figured by now it's open season. So I figured. Oh yeah. Oh open. yeah. Yeah. Gloves I was still good during the rest. I thought it was like like a like a kettle about to boil over. So <laughs> it's it's funny because people will listen to because when we talk on the podcast, we just talk like we're talking now. We don't even think about it. So people will tweet at us or email us and and say like, "Oh, that was so funny that you were talking about this." And I'm like, "When was I talking about <laughs> that?" He's like, "Oh, you talked about it for like 20." I'm like, "Okay, all right, that's fine." Yeah. He doesn't listen back. You can't. I don't listen. Yeah. No. Yeah. You guys have a hard time watching yourselves, like editing and stuff like that. I forgot that I just made that joke a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch our, our lives. I, I don't know, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I find it very weird watching what we do. I find it yeah. really, uh, yeah, almost like uncomfortable slash unnerving. I, I would, yeah. we would go through the chat afterwards, like uh, mute yeah. the sound and go through the chat after. But uh, I'm watching it. No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's weird because we never plan to be in front of the camera. We kind of right. just, not for a bad way, I guess, maybe it was the best way for us to do it. We just literally got dumped into this. Because yeah. well, we did the live stream that night and just kind of, people said, yeah. oh, I like what you do. So we said, well, let's do it for the 1K one time. People right. get to know us. And, well, here we are. So, yeah. yeah. Eight, uh, well, we did, uh, we did, this is the eighth one? Yeah. Yeah, eighth, uh, except in a row, except for Easter Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So are you guys uh, like shooting for a goal like 12 days in a row or 30 days in a row? Don't we don't know yet. We're just uh, rolling with it. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> this, this couldn't be more by seat by the seat of the pants if we tried. I think. Right. Yeah. No, we are trying different things right now. Like we tried on Tuesday our Tuesday tech talks, uh, and uh, it looks like that is gonna uh, yeah. stay. Uh, so we try different things and, and different themes, so to say, and see what works and what format works. And, and then we'll see afterwards, like try it for a while and then look back and see what worked better and what we can leave, what we can throw out. I think we need a month of doing it to yeah. kind of see where it's going to work. And then we'll be at a better like a trial place. period. Yeah. And we're yeah. lucky. Yeah. Honestly, we have great guests like you guys. We have great guests in the chat. That makes it easy because nobody's like coming down on us. Oh, you stumbled on here or there. Right. Every, I think if actually people are appreciating that we are kind of just who we are. This like you guys are saying yeah. to you. Well, when I when I came across the I am a creator hashtag, you guys are one of the first people uh that I saw live. And Ooh. I I was like, oh, this is so cool. These because we we have been talking, the podcast community is super supportive, especially the independent podcast community, because no one really goes into podcasting thinking they're gonna make anything because there's no there's, There's really no, no money in no. It, unless you're huge. Yeah. It's a yeah. passion and, thing so, and then the luck of the draw. Right. And and there's and and every I mean everybody does, it was not that big of a deal. People don't do it to make money. Right. Yeah. Um but on YouTube we know people do they a lot of people get into it because they see these other uh, whether it's beauty vloggers or just daily vloggers and they're like, "Well, I can do that. I exactly. I can have 16 million subscribers and, <laughs> and I'm going to make $100,000 a year." Yep. And so um, it was interesting because when we started vlogging, we were expecting that same kind of openness and um, yeah. support in the, in the podcast. And we were, it was like, no. we're like, yeah. oh my gosh, <laughs> okay, we're not trying to steal anybody's idea here. I was just reaching out to say, hey, you know, I'm <laughs> learning about this. So I'm just asking right. questions. So it was really nice to come across the I am a creator because it is, and, and obviously, I mean, the way I see it, it's everybody wants to help each other, but they also want to help themselves, which is which great. Is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. and, but it was nice to at least find some people that are willing to be open and listen and go, oh, I am actually going to watch your video. It might only be one. It might only be for a week, but I'm actually going to watch it. I'm going to comment. I'm yep. going to give you some opinions and, and then you can do the same for me. But you guys were one of the first lives uh, that I watched. It was you and Verdict Squad, actually. Oh, okay. Which, That's nice. which you know, I, I told Marco, I said, because we're so much older than most of the people that, you know, that he uh, talks with and mm -hmm. all the, the other gamers. I'm like, we're just going to be like your cool aunt and uncle and just show up on your live stream and... <laughs> 
and hang out. And but when when and I make weird comments, and yeah, make really inappropriate <laughs> comments. Well, like came to the right place. We're being in here, right? You know. So, but then but then seeing you guys, it was the first time for me that I felt like, oh, there, you know, there are people like us out there yeah. that are doing this and having fun and hope that it becomes more and has a goal and has a vision, but at the same time is them are themselves. Yes. That it's not, it's not this radio personality, which is fine. It's just not my thing. You know, yes, I don't know if they want to go that route. It's just yes. not our route, but yeah. I mean, if that's what you feel comfortable with, you know, I had people we want to be miserable or bad. Hey, if that's your goal. Be the worst you can be, you know, like I, I'm cheering you on right to the, you know, Right, right. Yep. So, so it was fun. So then it, it. Uh, so then I started following you guys, and and you know, for me, um, since we just got into it, I figured because everybody was talking about you guys, and you could see your name being retweeted, this, and I'm like, they must have been doing this for freaking ever, and they've got to be like, like at the top of the mountain, looking oh, down, going, oh, and it was, and and it was nice to hear, like, as I heard more of your live streams, that it's like, oh, you you guys are 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 into it, but also figuring it out too and what you want to do with it. And I'm like, this is amazing. And then when you guys asked, do you want to be on? I was like, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Why uh, wouldn't we? Yeah. That's so nice. That's oh. so nice. <laughs> yeah, it was great. So uh, so I, uh, I want to say thank you for not only having us on, but also for restoring my, uh, I guess, faith in the fact that there are other really cool people. And, and now through this, we've met a lot. Right, but right. of course. Like a glimmer of, oh, cool. Here's some people that can go watch their videos and feel good about watching their videos and reach yeah. out and they'll respond as a normal, not not it's going to be like, hey, sub for sub, you know, yeah. or, you know, I supported you. Go support me. I'm like, don't tell me what to do. Mount our 12. Like 14, subscriber 981. I'm like, I don't know what these numbers mean, but if they're your like pin code to your ATM card, I am in. Hun, <laughs> they're after us. We got to get out of here. <laughs> they figured it out. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's related to weapons, but this is getting scary. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it is. And that's not a comfortable feeling. And I mean, I don't mind somebody being a hustler if that's what they want to do, because I know they're going to be gone in a week or two. Right. I'm not losing sleep over it. I'll let them still come on. I mean, I'm not going to stop it from checking what I, what I do. Maybe they actually might like it. If they don't, right. well, I'm not losing sleep, but I won't go chasing after them or I won't beg them to come back just so I can keep that number. Right. right. Uh, to come in the first time for sure. I'll, I always want to see what somebody else is doing. But uh, yeah, the ones that's the ones that are there have been there. And I, for a year, it's the same as music. Like I, I did these videos. I was putting in some of them 20, 30 hours of editing. The wedding one, the first one we did, Joe, Hank and Joe's wedding, that's got over 80 some hours of editing into wow. it. Wow. And <laughs> I mean, I did well at the end. I finally got over 10,000 and finally like kind of kicked. But almost nobody watched it for a long time. And when we started February 2nd, we had 42 subscribers. I was done. Like I'd been saying, you know what? I'm finished. Yeah, I don't care anymore. I'll just put my work into something else. We'll keep right. doing our business and uh, in short, the hell with it because I, I don't want it's not the money in this part. We already have a business. If I uh, tomorrow make a million dollars doing it, excellent, but it's not my main goal. The main goal was uh, the same as when you write a song or something. What's the point if nobody hears it? Right, exactly. That's the worst feeling in the world is why do I do it if nobody cares? Yeah, right. And now to have some people care and like some people really say, especially because we don't use voice reveals to say, oh, I really connected with what you did. You know, I, I, I like how you can take something so every day and make it exciting. Th that's worth its weight in gold. Oh, for sure. It's that it's that feeling of it's that playing to an empty room year after year after year when yeah. no one shows up and you're like, this is great. I love doing this, but I do it so other people will enjoy it with me. So if no one's coming to enjoy it. Yeah, it, it, it's pointless. Yeah. There's a song by a Canadian band. I don't know if you ever heard. They're big in Canada. They, some of the states are called Blue Rodeo. Okay, I haven't. I haven't heard of them. And they have a song. It, it was actually written one night when they were in, I think, Iowa or somewhere. And they were playing one of those famous state fairs, like where everybody's drunk and throwing up, and nobody's looking at the stage. Right. And the song is called <laughs> "What Am I Doing Here." Yeah. Right. On this useless night with you so far away, I stand in front of this Ferris wheel. 
<laughs> and I wonder what am I doing here? You know, like that. Yeah. And it's yeah. that's the tone of what it feels like to stand on a stage and ten people kicking bottles around. You know. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's funny because it's like at that point, that's when you'd rather have two people that are really listening yes. or at least enjoying versus the ten or fifteen or a hundred that are you know texting and looking at each other and yeah. Definitely, 100%. There's something to be rewarded for what you do. And the same as you guys. I mean, you guys put a lot. I was watching your videos, by the way, and I was going through some of the highlight ones, and I would sort by the most popular, most recent, the oldest, just to get a feel. And you guys got a really nice feel with it. And it kind of reminds me of, it's like a new take on the 90s version of travel vlog. Like mm -hmm. when you get them on TV, yeah, with a new kind of energy to it. And that's a really nice mix. Because today, a lot of them is kind of like, let's follow the highest trend and, oh, we're going to go down. You know, it's too in your face. Yeah, right. yeah. it's different. A I pace. Think, yeah, now it, it, watching your videos, they're different. Because when we had our Urban's Iceland company before this, we, we were dealing a lot of, with travel companies and travel blogs yeah. and vlogs and all, all that. And, and lots of them, after a while, went into the one kind of vlog yeah. because they were in the same format. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we came across your channel it right away strikes is different yep. you know it's uh like right away the different format the different way you're doing it and it's actually interesting i think it's because you brought your that. history as a podcast yes. into your videos yes. you can really feel, feel that, that right away because you could easily shut off the video and still know what's going on and there's a nice even tempo to it yeah it's not rushed and it's not sleepy it's you know i, I really yeah, it's like you're sitting in your couch watching it go on and talking about it as it happens, and I find that amazing. And, and for the, we wanted it to be for people that were really interested in going to these places to have something where they could get because you know you look at a brochure or you you read some stuff online, but we wanted people to feel like you're there, you're there, and you, you can know? actually see what you're walking through and how it's gonna be to do it, not us. Not about us going, oh my God, we had a great time and we're going to tell you that. But for the most part, it's no, this is what you're going to see. We might still make those videos. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but this is this is what you're going to see and, and this is how it's going to be. And we just wanted it to be. And of course, then it's our personalities because we can't just leave it alone. Right. We're still going to be well, I mean, us about. We actually had this conversation like because like our walkthrough videos, we're not even in them. Yeah. So oh. um, we actually had this conversation when we decided to like, um, try a little harder with our YouTube channel and stuff. Like, do we want to just be a travel vlog or something like that? But then we have to travel a lot more, obviously. Like, which is fine. But... Which is great. <laughs> but... but like, um, as you guys were saying, like we have jobs, you know, like, and we're not going to quit those jobs, even if the vlog, you know, makes money. Like we, yeah, we have great we like jobs, jobs with <laughs> retirement benefits, like, but we're yeah. going to keep our jobs. So it'd be great if the vlog made any kind of money whatsoever just so we could buy some new like cameras and things like that but that's really not the end game is not to like quit our jobs and live off vlogging that we're never going to do that so yeah, those are the channels that tend to do very well because they're not so pushed right and so we feel like a little more comfortable like a little more laid back like we, we try to set a goal for ourselves like getting our videos out on time and things like that but that's just a personal goal i you know like for um structure and things like that but like we uh but it's not like a goal to like quit our jobs and like really, really push it down everyone's throat or whatever. We just kind of hope that everybody stops by and enjoys watching. And we actually watch our own uh, walk through vacation videos because we, we miss it because we want to go back and <laughs> yeah. we love going yeah. there. And so like, I'll actually have it up at work sometimes and my boss will come in and he'll, and he'll be like, Oh, Hey, where's the, Oh, is that the Jamaica? <laughs> is that the Jamaica video? Yeah. It's also yeah. one of the <laughs> yeah. one of the reasons we were trying to keep our videos like 10 minutes and less cuz we want people to be able to just come in, get a glimpse yeah. of us, hang out and then take off and either watch another video or go go do whatever they want. And like I said, we're not doing anything new. We're not doing anything that other people haven't done or aren't going to do. We're just doing it like us. And we thought we're just going to have fun with it. We're going to do, we're going to have our little weird ways of talking and our, our little weird ways of looking at our dogs are going to be part of it. And yeah. we're going to make goofy noises and that, but it's just going to be us. And that's it, which yeah. is, which is funny because then when people like it, it feels really good. But then when people don't, you're like, Aww. Oh, they really don't like us. <laughs> Cause it's, <laughs> yeah. there's nothing else here, but us. Right. And in, in, in your head, you know, that's okay. But like, yeah. emotionally, you're like, Oh, they don't like us. And playing in a band, you get that all the time. And, and we had it with the podcast. It's always, it's always like, Oh, we're okay. I like you. Yeah. I like you too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you have an amazing dynamic. It's I, I think even if, it, if you do change your format somewhat in in the more a travel blogging style, I think we would really enjoy it as well because your yeah. dynamic is so captivating. So that's a big thing like if you have the right yeah. personality you guys can take it on to pretty much whatever you decide to go with that's always going to be there you know and that will that's what people are get drawn into and i i think that is you guys have that already a lot of people are still struggling to try and find that is that charisma on camera i think it's the best way as you know, just said is just be you and and mm -hmm. it, that's why people i think gravitate more to those channels yeah. when, uh, where people are themselves yeah. not forced it's just them because you can instantly feel through the video if if somebody is putting something on, I think. Okay. I yes. personally feel like that. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. It was interesting when we when we started the channel, I didn't watch any, like I've never watched a lot of the big YouTubers, not because I didn't want to, it just wasn't my thing. I watched YouTube mainly so I can check out the old, you know, Poison, Warren, mm -hmm. Rat, White Lion videos. Oh my God, they're so like <laughs> yeah. and, and so I could check out like the new Lamborghini that I'll never buy, you know? So uh, yes, I know, I know. Another thing so on the then, list. So then you when- You guys have the same subscription fee. <laughs> Probably. I'm telling you, I'm terrified to look right now. I'm you look at the history of the internet, so right, right, right. Right. Same keywords uh, there. <laughs> So, so I, when we started doing it, I didn't want to watch because I didn't want to get swayed at like my editing style or mm -hmm. how I was going to talk or how I was going to do the camera. I mean, obviously there's certain ways to do the camera, um, hold the camera and things like that, frame shots. But um, I didn't want to see anything because I was afraid I'd, I'd pick up somebody else's persona and try to be that. That's and it is funny to go back and watch the first couple of videos because I didn't know what I was doing. So I was, I was trying to be myself but i was trying so hard to be myself that i wasn't myself right oh and it's God. fun to go back there and, and watch and i'm like hey everybody i felt like the box from the progressive commercial that i'm like hey <laughs> you know i'm chin chilling you know so description below yeah, description below i got like way too into it and i'm like this i can't do it i just gotta be me see and i had the opposite like i think you were talking about it earlier where like I and I'm so focused on like is that what my hair looks like? <laughs> yeah. What is my what is my face doing right now? Like what it do I have that tick like in person? Because I was like <laughs> nervous, so I had to get like almost like this weird like little eye or lip tick, and I'm like, do I do that like normally? Can you <laughs> look at me like am I doing that now? <laughs> like you know, great. Like I would have never guessed you were nervous. <laughs> no, yeah, no, it's, no. it's so funny. No, we'll get right. tick. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I don't, what you're I, like. I know. <laughs> we'll get we'll get ready to record it. Not only I'll say, are you ready? And she's like, no. <laughs> it's like, a, it's right. almost like a head between. He's like, yeah. She's like, okay. talking herself up. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, you know, we're unboxing a pair of shoes. I just got my shoes. Like, I don't know. I don't know what's so important about this right now. And you know, it's to the point. Sometimes I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna go, and then you just call me when you're ready. She's like, oh, right. Okay. So you take All some right. minutes. Yeah. Breathe it out. Yeah, and then we start, and it's like she's just her again, and I'm like, I don't know. I don't the, know what the last 15 minutes was. I don't but. know. <laughs> <laughs> when we go to launch this channel every night, you got to press the green button. Right. I swear to God, it looks like a scene from Armageddon in here. Right? <laughs> like, oh, are you ready? Oh, we got this with like Thelma and Louise going <laughs> in. <over a> <laughs> oh, that's great. You have that's to talk so each other down. Like, okay, it's gonna yeah. be okay. Yeah. We can do this. We did oh, it yeah. yesterday. Dramatic here. Yeah, we got the. It's. It'll only take twenty minutes. That's all. We're not here all day. We just get the recording done, right. and we're. I'll edit it, and we're done. It's like okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> and I think vlogging would be harder than doing live stream myself. Oh, you know, we did. We we live streamed the podcast last week, and and obviously doing this with you, and we've decided we're gonna do like the behind the vlog, uh, a little series that we do once a month, just talking about how vlogging is going. We're gonna do that live, but yeah, for us, I think live streaming would be because we're so used to doing it on the podcast, so we just yeah. sit and talk. That it it's it's kind of nice because there's whatever comes out comes out. You're not gonna edit it. You don't have to worry about it. Yep. The content is there, whether it's good or not. It's there. It's there. If it's <laughs> in the chat room or guests whatever it is you just have to deal with it. you don't have to I mean, think about it two hours that's up or you delete it for three seconds that you didn't like you know right 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 and that's very hard for me because i'm a perfectionist yeah in my video editing that's probably funny you mentioned that's probably the hardest hurdle that i'm getting over right now is not having that control to go back and fix that moment but is it oh helping? yeah but is it helping you let go is it helping I think it you is. like yeah therapy really in a way like yeah. just 
I, th I really think it's been, I, I hate to use the term, but I'd say a bit therapeutic for that. Yeah. Because yeah. it's let me like, you know, let go a little. So I, I think so. Yeah. And, and you guys would be perfect. Like you say, you've already done it. If you've done the podcast, it's just now they'll see your mouth moving. You know, that's the only <laughs> difference. <laughs> <laughs> like, because when we did the podcast, it took me, I was really nervous at first, and now I can do the podcast no problem. So I'm hoping that I get there with the video. But like I said, I still have the weird, like, facial tick thing where I'm, like, trying to hold my look. I'm like, okay, oh. look at the camera. It is It is funny when we record. Like, okay, relax. I am relaxed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm like, you know, you, you know, like, you got to get out of the zone and just, yeah. like, I always think we're at a table talking to each other. Get out of your head and out of your own way. And I tell myself that. Yep. And then I, I still, you know, struggle. Come. So <laughs> I think we still get to, as we said, Armageddon, like on the first time, I, I didn't even know what we were going to talk about. What we were going to do. And I, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But it's still, it's, it, it gets better. Yeah. But it's still there. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's a great way of putting it. And that's why I think that pressing the button time is where that comes out most. Yeah. Right. And then after we talk for like 30 seconds and kind of get into things, it starts to feel more comfortable. That's why I don't want to watch a lot of what we do because I'd probably sit there. Ethan from H3H3 he gives that right. example. Right. He, sits, he watches it and he just says, oh, I sound so stupid. Why did I say that? You know, oh, I hate my right. voice. I would be that person. Yeah. It would probably not make me want to come back again. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. When, when I go back to edit, you know, like the vlogs that we do, it's, it's tough to – um to not think that way and then it's tough that next time we record not to like tell on elise like oh make sure i don't do this make sure i don't do this. it's like no we just got to let it go and what <laughs> yeah. comes out comes out and that's that's it but it is tough because i don't he like he doesn't myself. listen to the podcast back no. he never re-listens ever so I, um, I never yeah so and and yeah but it's <laughs> it's bizarre it's, I get it. Is so much fun i mean it's so much fun because it's now and there's people yes. in the chat and even even uh you know i know a lot of the the chat room interacts with with themselves which is great because yep. i mean I think, I think that's exactly what it's for but yep. there are those questions that come out or, or you see that people are there and enjoying it's it's a lot of fun i really enjoy yeah, it. this is like a podcast to them mm -hmm. yeah you have video but they, it is and that's why we try to like uh we're kind of getting used to it, we still try to come back and ask questions and get the audience involved with it. Sure. That's a big part of what we want to do that we didn't see in some of the other ones was really getting them interactive into it with questions, you know, how the, that that's what makes it more of like a bit of a TV show, I guess, in that way. Yeah, we always you know. have at the end, uh, like a, a little segment of time where we interact directly with uh, people from yeah. the chat, you know, if there are any questions or <clears throat> not just the shout outs and things like that, because it's yeah. important, you know, that's what yeah. we have for. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that's the one impressive thing with Marco and on Verdict Squad that he just turns on the live stream and it, it's just him talking to the people in the chat room. I mean, yeah, I know. that's it. And, it, and he's so good at and how he remembers everything yeah he's like oh so and so didn't you play da 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 and you this and yeah, every time we're in there he's like oh yeah they live stream their podcast 2011 and then he's like oh and you were drinking this and you were having that and you did this and uh, is Annalise still at work and I'm like oh my god how do you <laughs> he has energy that I could only beg for right. <laughs> the, the kid's amazing and and yeah it's all just sitting there like reading the chat and answering everybody he keeps yep. all the freaking conversations separate and I'm mm -hmm. like you're and the team. hands are clapping, and it's like, oh, oh yeah. Larry Johnson, the host. Great, great, great. Yeah. You got Larry Johnson. Now he's going to get five steps. No, okay, the geeks there. Terrell's only five down. We got to get her. Come on, let's yeah, go, let's yeah. go, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and, the, and the, the speech, like, you know, like uh, beats red, red headphones and, per, per, you know, percentage of the proceeds go to a company that helps fight aid. I'm like, and he just throws it in there, and then he's and then he's off, and he's golfing, and he's back, and I'm like. Eating brownies. And, and, I'm, and I'm totally <laughs> enjoying it. I realize, like, I've been watching this for an hour and 20 I minutes. I just watched this guy eat brownies for, like, an hour. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> What's happening? It's great. But it's neat because I think, I think, uh, I think, yeah, I, I, it seems like in, in our short time of doing this, what I've been seeing is that that might be the direction YouTube is going, where it's yeah. it's more interactive, more interactive and, and you yeah. are because it's not just watch me do this. It's hey, yeah. do this with me. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is really cool. It is. It, it's a really we're uh, we're growing so fast in the world with technology that we're taking so much for granted. That's why I said at the beginning. You know that recently this would have been something seen on Star Trek. Things become so amazing so many times now in the span of five years. We don't appreciate how far we've come and right. what we can do. Like, think of it. Right now, you're in California. We're in Montreal. We have people from 
probably what 12 different countries you god only knows right <laughs> you're doing this like it's an amazing feat when you think about it that never cost anything more than our internet connection yeah, yeah. no extra software didn't cost us 29.95 a month or you know right. <laughs> the 500 dollars pack to get this it's yeah. a really amazing world yeah it is and i and i know i it's not the most uh popular opinion but it's like i know you know with youtube changing their monetization and all that i thought it's it's this free platform where we get to experience other people's lives and we get to put our own lives on there i yep. kind of understand that it's different than if they said hey if you pay 100 bucks a month you can do whatever you want and you get a percentage of this so I, yep. When they changed it, even though we got, you know, demonetized from a, a different channel, I, I was like, I get it. You know, it makes yeah. sense to me. It's like, let's find out people that are putting a little more time into it and a little more effort. And, uh, you know, I mean, it was it was terrible to see what ended up happening down here in San Bruno. Yes, um, yes, very much. But, but I, I mean, I, I wasn't, I was like, oh, okay, so there's just different rules. You make the rules, I'll, I'll figure out a way to win by your rules. I'm fine with that. Yeah. You yeah. go ahead and change. I'm okay with it. You know, it's yeah. still free. It's still something I can share with my friends and family, and I'm I'm cool with that. And I know that's not the most popular. No, opinion, but no, but people get used to the things that they are, and then they almost start saying that they own yeah. the 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 pro, yeah. like you know the platform, they, they which they don't. Yeah, right. yeah. And, yeah. And the quality got lazy, and the people yeah. making it got lazy. It's like a forest fire. Like you know, we hate to see economic crashes, but they're even they're like forest fires. Everything yeah. happens. Every so often to weed out, like the 80s when we talk about, and I promise I'll go back to it, but it's a great example of, I love the music of the 80s, and I was very upset when grunge kind of smashed in. Sure. So let's face it. I know. Sure. It, it? That was a good one. But good. It, it cleaned up what was really a bad mess when I had to sit back and look at it. And yeah. the same as when music came in the 2000s, God help us all. <laughs> like when rap rock took over. Yeah. <laughs> things change for a reason and youtube was the exact same way and yeah. instead of waiting a decade which was very fast back then to people who were 80 at the time now every two years things change and soon it's gonna be every six months because there's so many going into it it's yeah. very easy for it to get junked up i think we're gonna do manic mondays for music <laughs> <laughs> there you go there you go and it's kind of neat now because I, it seems like with youtube like now we're now creators or people on youtube whatever the heck you want tubers whatever you want to call them we're all actually starting to talk to each other and help yep. each other which, which is a neat way to actually yep. communicate and socialize mm -hmm. with people yep. as opposed to just watching the video we're actually talking and tweeting and texting and this and that yep. and it's it's i think it's kind of a neat thing four months ago if i went not well just take your channel but i know you guys aren't like that Hey, I like what you did. Would you like to come and see what I do? Flagged for spam, you right. know, flagged for abuse of channel right. And, and who wants to ask? So nobody was, everybody was scared to even ask anybody to do it. Yeah. Because they get flagged. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's true. So now it kind of got rid of that veil over that. You know, it took away that taboo of it is okay to say, do you think you could maybe come and see what I do as well? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, I think that's going to help progress youtube to have people that create even better content because yeah. oh, those sorry. the people that are ultra selfish or that are just trying to get paid are going to get frustrated because they are going to get flagged because they're just going to go and not watch and say hey here's my link here's my youtube channel everyone's going to say well you're not actually watching our videos so get out of here you know exactly 100 100 percent. it's the wild west Right. It really is. It's yeah, a it new is. frontier right now we're going through. And yeah. nobody really has the rule book down. And we are hard on YouTube, but sometimes uh, you got to look at it from their point for a moment. It's hard to write the, the rule book on something that hasn't really had any rules put in place yet. How do you do it? You know, there's different countries involved, different customs. Different, it's very hard to sit down. We all think it's, oh, they just have to do three things and we're good. Right. It don't work that way. Well, look yeah. how hard it is, you know, United States with all the states involved in European Union, with all yeah. the countries involved. It's hard to have one rule book, exactly yeah. as you're saying. Well, YouTube basically is, you know, like uh, EU or United States of Internet. So yeah. how, how do you how do you manage that all? It's obviously it's hard. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's one of those weird things too, where I think um, we know like it's very popular to hate YouTube because they're trying to make money. But the, but the thing is, is like for our podcast, we have to pay to have our podcast broadcast. Like we have to pay to have yeah. it put up on the internet or whatever. So it's not free for us, even though no. we don't make money from it, it's not yeah. free for us. 
but okay. YouTube is free for us. So YouTube has to make money somehow. And we can't, if they don't make money, then there is no YouTube. So yep. they have to be able to do that somehow. And so, you know, as you say, like they're, they're trying to figure it out and so we're trying to work yeah. within the rules because if it's not free, then we wouldn't be here probably. So it started at a bad time. It started when the idea was that it was wrong to make money if right. you were into the internet. Right. And now they're trying to catch up with it. And we've almost become a accustomed to this idea that YouTube is a privilege. Right. Oh, right excuse me and not a privilege, right. not a privilege. Right. That's not right. it goes. it's a privatized company sure and it's funny because i always think like okay if you think your content is so freaking amazing put it on your own web channel yep control it all yourself yeah and see how many people you get go on twitch there's all different other platforms yeah. if you want to play with yeah it. yeah so it, no it's uh yeah it's funny because in my head i'm like wait a minute so this company sells the advertising they do all the work and yep. if i follow their rules they're still willing to give me some of their money yeah, I'll follow, that's fine. I'll follow the rules. I'm in. <laughs> right. This is cool. You so, tell me. Yeah. What are the rules? <laughs> yeah. Tell me what you want. You, you, you want to change them? Yeah, it's fine. I'll follow those okay. too. That's all right. I'm good. And I mean, look what ruined it. You know, every time it's a couple of bad ones, I mean, or, it's, or it gets overblown. Like I still kind of stand up for PewDiePie a bit. I feel he was kind of railroaded. Well, yeah. I, yeah. That's my personal opinion. Not every, I don't know if everybody shares it, but that's how I feel. You as well? Uh, yeah. As far as the businesses, I mean, I'm not, I, I'm not, uh, a fan of the content and actually have never, you know, don't watch a lot of those kind of videos. But mm -hmm. as far as, yeah, when, when you establish and now you're be pretty much a partner with that company because of what you've brought to it. And yeah. it doesn't matter for the reason people can say, well, I'm not talented. I, I don't care about that. You can, you can be freaking Beethoven or you can be vain, you know, you can be a, a glam band, but if you're bringing the money <laughs> in, Right. If you're bringing the money in, if you're bringing viewers, if you're bringing eyes to YouTube and you become a partner, then there is some responsibility from YouTube to yep. those people. And when all of a sudden you you change a business model or say, well, we're going to do this, it's kind of like, well, that's yep. I, I wasn't I didn't think that was cool. And in a in a in a morality sense of yes. business, when you want to do good business again, yep. nothing about the content or the no. person. I, I don't care about that. You know, the, the funny part about him is, is actually it used to drive me crazy. My oldest son is 20 and he watch it. And I'm like, can you not find anything better? Like even a <laughs> dead space right. to watch. And now I'm kind of addicted it. to him. <laughs> yeah. And now my son will watch it because I watch it. So <laughs> that's great. Uh, that's all he had to do was start watching it yourself, and then he was like, "Out." If Dad likes it, it's not cool. Yeah. It's done. It's, I don't, it's, it's, it's tainted now. That's it. You're and like, he's kind of oh. happy that I know a bit about it, so I don't sound like a completely square dad. But he thinks I know too much about it, which means I get too involved. So I think he wants me still to find my own. That's. <laughs> he's like, "Okay, go, Dad. Go do." Go We're do. not discussing this, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna... You're like, "Hey, did you see?" He's like, "I don't. Don't." Don't say it. I don't care if you saw the video too. Leave me alone. <laughs> You're not ruining this for me. You're not ruining <laughs> it. That Jenna Marbles is crazy, right? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's, uh, yeah, for me, I, uh, it's, it's car videos, music, and spicy chicken wings. That's the big, oh, big thing that I like to watch YouTube for. Well, we wouldn't do our job if we didn't push our favorite Canadian creator is Peter McKinnon. Have you guys watched him? No, oh, I'm no. gonna write it down though. He's been starting to videos all the with Peter Neistat. <laughs> Peter McKinnon, he uh, got his first million subs in uh, was it 11 months? Yeah. Oh wow! Wow! And he's a cinematographer. He does his own view. Like his photography, his cinematography is like just. This guy like would be th literally sick and throwing a Kleenex out and make it look like you were in an epic film. Wow! For his vlog and I wonder if we've seen it and just not realized. Maybe it. yeah. Probably yeah. He's he's been because Casey Neistat is they call them now the ultimate internet bro couple. They've started doing videos together now and then. Oh okay. Because oh, okay. Casey is known as, uh, he's not stupid and he sees where Peter's going all of a sure. sudden. Like yeah, I got to team up with this guy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No. Somebody definitely worth checking out. He does some really good videos, and he's very true to the music. His dad is actually a luthier. Is what? Uh, oh, sorry, I forget the name in English. Sorry, oh. I said in French. I'm, <laughs> like, I'm like, what? I'm, I'm sorry, like, that, uh, that just came out. <laughs> Did that to himself? Wow. <laughs> Maybe he's, I should be the guitar builder. <laughs> yeah. <right>, okay. <laughs> no, we're back again to it. Oh, amazing. Yeah. 
Poor guy. Wow. Yeah, I know. Well, I wish the best for him. <laughs> I do. I do. Well, he'll get through it. But yeah, you should really check out his work. I find he's very uh, uh, quite inspiring with his work and also his motives and stuff. So. For sure. Klaus uh, Media Archive says it helps that he's ruggedly handsome. <laughs> yeah. 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 There you go. There it's you go. Right. It's not going to hurt. That's <laughs> I mean, yes, exactly. I was just getting to that point. You know, right. you, you mentioned hot <laughs> like chicken wings. Uh, what about hot ones? Are you watching? That's the one. Yeah, That's totally. The one. Obsessed. Obsessed. Yeah. yeah. Is that the best show on the internet? Oh, yeah. my goodness. That's yeah. so good. Yeah, I That's stumbled it. I stumbled across I think of it? Uh, a few years ago, and I was like, "What is this?" And then I was hooked, and I'm like, "This is." They just sit around eating hot wings together and asking, "Okay." Which is funny because I um I recently stopped eating meat, but I love chicken wings. So I was actually and less on, spicy food. I was on oh. YouTube looking for chicken wing like recipes, different recipes I could make at home, and I came across this, and I was like. This is brilliant. I absolutely love Sean Evans. I yeah. think he's like the yes. best. Yes. Yeah. He's that guy like I want to be friends with. Like I wish there was a way I could yes. talk to him and say like, oh my God, I would totally be your buddy. And then, <laughs> you know, then I'd creep him out and he'd be like, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Sean Evans, I play the flute too. No. Wow. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> How far off in the scale would you be able to go? Oh, I'd go as far as Sean wanted me to. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> just let that go. <laughs> oh my god, so funny. Uh, me, wings, a flute, shot at yeah, me. I was right on the flute, was I swear to god, I was thinking about the flute. another Saturday night. <laughs> another Saturday oh. night. <laughs> to Saturday night, it's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is you guys are so amazing. <laughs> oh my god. This this is this is what I love about this channel when we meet people like you guys. <laughs> yeah. It's so amazing. How did you guys meet, if you don't mind me asking? Um, so <laughs> they're like, oh, that's yeah. <laughs> so our um, we met um, our circle of friends because musicians at her work and me being in a band kind right. of were always around each other. And um, then when we ended up getting together, the the guy who was playing bass in the band that I was. Uh, in at the time was working at Skywalker Sound. Mm -hmm. So he invited Annalise to a show and, and that's where we met. And when we first met, um, we were both with other people. We mm -hmm. were both seeing other people. And um, so we met and, you know, was it a couple years later? A year? Uh, maybe like a year later. Uh, we met again and uh, the bass player says, oh, you know, this is Annalise. And I'm like, oh, it's so nice to meet you. And she looks at me and goes, oh, we've met before. Mm. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh my God. Really? She loves to tell that story. I'm like, I all the time. Don't. But we were with <laughs> other people. So I wasn't, you know, I, I mean, oh, you know, no. <laughs> when you're in a rock band, there's just girls, girls. galore. Yeah. <laughs> and Sean Evans. Right. Okay. <laughs> So, so that's how we met. It was pretty much through friends, through music, but we had right. known each other for a long time and then of, we of each other. Yeah. We realized uh, much later that um, we had actually been in the same circle of friends for about almost 20 years yeah. and not oh ever met each other before that night. Yeah. We'd be talking like, Oh, this place, you know, was at this show. And, and, and then we're like, Annalise was like, I was at that show. I know like, that guy. Yeah. Or do you know so and so? I'm like, yeah, I was, I was right, at that like, studio. Like he went to high school with um a, a good friend of mine who I've been working with for 20 years. They went to high school together and like had bands in common and stuff like that. But we had never actually met. Yeah. So when we, so, we when we were somewhere together and this person walked in, Annalise goes, "Oh, I want you to meet my friend." And I was like, "Okay, cool." But then I saw Sean and right. I walked up. I'm like, "Hey, big hug." And she's like, "Oh, you you know him?" And I'm How like, "How do you know Sean?" Yeah, we've known each other since yeah. high school. So <laughs> yeah, so it was, it's it's kind of fun. Yeah, weird and fun. Like yeah. we just weren't meant to meet until later. Until you later, know? we yeah. had to go through some stuff first. Yeah. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. yeah, it's like a Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks movie. Yes, like, yes, this right, right. <laughs> a little more rock and roll though. Yeah, yeah that's right. With a little edge. Yeah, that's good though. That's there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. It was like the Meg Ryan Tom Tom Hanks movie slash Wayne's World. <laughs> oh, yeah. that, that's that brings a tear Wait, to me. Yeah, you can be Wayne. Oh, that is so. 
<laughs> oh, you got to keep that. Remember that line. You guys got to use that when you start. The, lines. <laughs> the oh, next time we say that, it'll come out super stale. I'll I be don't like, know if that's a <laughs> doesn't matter. That will be your tagline. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna change. Yeah, I'll change all our profile stuff to to uh, we, when, when, when baseball caps and like yeah. <laughs> When Harry met Sally slash Wayne's World or oh whatever. My God. <laughs> do you remember a TV show Wayne. called Mad? Do you remember a TV show called Mad TV? Oh yeah. yeah. Did you ever? See, the first season was the only one I ever really truly loved. The original cast, Artie Lang, and those guys, and they did a version of that movie. They used that's when they did all the spoofs, and they did when Harry met Willie, and it was a cross between that and Free Willie. <laughs> <laughs> and they did the scene in the restaurant, but it's the killer whale. They're all yeah. having the killer whales having. I can still see the water blowing out of her hole every time. <laughs> Mad TV was that was that was a fun show. It was. It yeah, was. I liked it because it was a little bit edgy, but when you broke it down, it wasn't. It was the weirdest thing. Yes. You like thought it was, but it was more what was in your head yes, than what they were exactly. actually doing. You're like, yeah. huh, that's impressive. And I think that's how they skirted the censorship, you know, yeah, for yeah. stuff like that way. If you just imply it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like Nilda's. Yeah. I implied, you inferred. Right. <laughs> They're in the hot seat. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's too good. Oh, that's a cool story, though. I can't believe, like, you guys were in that circle for so long and never met. I find that so yeah, interesting. Really weird. Yeah, and there's still st things we'll talk about or places that will go, oh, and... and like, I've oh, been, there. been there. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's unbelievable. And you're the one who doesn't believe in fate and destiny. Yeah. See, see, see. <laughs> right, and like the whole thing with Skywalker, like Neil grew up living like down the street and I've been working there for 20 years, but he had never actually been on the property or whatever. Oh so like the first time yeah. was, you know, with me. So you, really you were the, far, the key to the know? ranch. As, as kids, we actually thought they had like X-Wing fighters out there. And, and they would like ride their bikes over there to like try to And sneak. that's where they filmed it. And we're like, we're going to sneak on and we're going to meet Luke Skywalker and all this stuff. Yeah, he's just hanging out there. Yeah. But to be, a, all... kid, uh, to be a kid and live that close to it, I mean, what a oh, dream. Yeah. Yeah. It was, and it was such a, I mean, it's such a beautiful area because it's, it's one of those little towns in Northern California, no sidewalks, no street lights. Everyone left their doors unlocked and you know, you're still 40 minutes away from San Francisco. It was, it was pretty cool. That is so crazy. Yeah. It was neat. <laughs> <laughs> Me and uh, Xenia and I, we had met on a, I, um, I was married before and that was at the end of it. And, um, there was a video game. I don't know if you remember, it was called second life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Xenia and I met on Second Life. Oh, that is so cool. She was in Latvia. I was in Canada. And we both were kind of going through parts of our life and just looking for something in the evenings. And we ended up meeting there. You know, they always drop you in the same spot. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't like the game very much, but we just decided, we kind of, kind of, I did not decide to stay friends, but just kind of talked a bit. And, yeah, we just started chatting uh, and yeah. eventually went to Skype and, and left kind of came yeah. behind us and just continued chatting on. And, and, and I always uh, thought, I think about the sweet part of it because of the time difference that we had. It's like eight hours, Andrew and Karen and me in Latvia, and oftentimes uh, ended up being on chat almost all the time. Come, like uh, yeah. he would go uh, to bed, uh, and I would be getting up, going to work, yeah. you know, and <laughs> I would waking fall up asleep. each other. He would fall asleep. Yeah. I would come back from work, put on my headphones, and would wake him up as he was sleeping Aww. on his phone at his yeah. table. <laughs> That's so awesome. That is so cute. Yeah. <laughs> so how was how was that for the longest time? I think that yeah. that online was uh, thing was just being on was going steady. It was we almost never hang up. Just was coming back all the time, waking yeah. each other up. With, uh... kind of treated the first time world. you guys met in person. Uh, well, it was a long time after. It was what a year. Somewhere yeah, it was uh, some some after. Yeah. That part. And by then, it's like. My ex had started at the time was like when we, she wasn't my ex. She, she worked the last three years of where I worked, and that was kind of the final straw. Uh huh. So then everything was at the end, and I said, "Well, I, I was leaving the company. Things had changed, and you know, when it's your dream job, and even that is making you miserable. Yeah, your life needs some something. Up. Yeah, yeah." And so I jumped on a plane. I said, you know what? I'm going to Europe for a couple of months. We've been talking. And I said, I, like, no offense to Xenia, and I'm glad. But at the time, I thought, what's the worst? If it doesn't work out, I yeah. got a place to stay. I got somebody cool to hang out with. <laughs> and then I'll come back and start life, you know, getting things right. organized again. 
and I jumped on a plane and went over and I uh, flew to Frankfurt and I had a two hour layover. So it was a six hour. I was so dead tired with the big change going on mm -hmm. that I was up for the last couple of days. When the plane took off, I don't even remember my flight to Europe. I literally fell asleep on the tarmac. Wow. I woke up once to see water and another time I was passing into Frankfurt. Yeah. And then I had a two hour layover and then I got on the plane to Riga. It was what, two and a half hours, mm -hmm. I think, with uh, Lufthansa. Mm -hmm. And I get off the airport and, you know, it hits me. It's like, we've talked so much. We almost know each other better than I've ever met anybody. The good part of it was it gave us a chance to really get to know each other. Mm -hmm. It was not rushed because, you know, it, it, there's not right. much you can do, but just keep talking. Yeah. But I'm thinking, what if this is the ultimate scam? Because, like, my poor mother, she's all worried. <laughs> she's like, I don't want you going to Russia. And it's like, I'm not going to Russia. <laughs> it's been a long time. It's not Russia. <laughs> like, you know, I was dealing with that kind of stuff. And they're doing it from the goodness of their heart. Sure. Like, yeah. One moment, like, what if this is what they said it was? Yeah. Or what if she doesn't show up? And what if I've gone and done this crazy thing that I never thought I would do? You know, I wasn't like 17 years old. Right. I was early in my 30s, and, and I've never done anything like this. And I always laughed at my friends who were single who were dating online. And now look what I've gone and done. You know, like <laughs> I, once again, Andrew laughs at them and then goes 10 times over what anybody else was thinking. You know? You're like, you guys never did it right. I'm going to yes, show you how to do it right. <laughs> yeah. So I'm walking in this airport and it's snaking back and forth. So every corner, I'm wondering, is this where I'm going to see her? Is she going to be there? You know, yeah. So it's like 15 minutes of this. I clear customs and I'm like, oh, like this pit in your stomach. <laughs> and I open the door and all of a sudden there's people standing around. I hear somebody yell my name and she runs up and she just grabs me and starts kissing me. Oh, and then all of a sudden I'm feeling this on my shoulder, which was probably about two minutes had passed and ended up I was blocking all the doorway. <laughs> for to get through. But some people started clapping. And there's like that Harry Met Sally thing, you know. That's great. Yeah. yeah. That is and so cute. We've been together ever since. Well, yeah, never and stopped. Never really. <laughs> Came back to Canada with me. And I mean, we had to leave Chris for a bit, our first son, and come over here, get things ready. And then, you yeah. know, things from there. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, that's all, That's a great story. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Getting all, getting all teary-eyed. That's so cool. <laughs> I'm hoping that Sean Evans and I have a story like that to tell someday. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can have them on next. <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> Our next guest will be. <laughs> I think that's C3. This is the real tear tear jerker, folks. Get ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> this is going down live, people. <laughs> yeah. That is so cool. And as he passed the wing to me, I knew he was the one. <laughs> yeah. As we did the little cheers thing, I'm like, oh. I'm going to last stab you, Sean. I will last stab you forever. <laughs> you guys are so incredible. Uh, oh, I wish he's lived closer now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll definitely have to, I mean, if uh, if you guys are ever this way, we, we have been talking about, I mean, obviously Canada is huge, but um, we've made a lot of friends through the podcast. So we want to do like a little tour of Canada because we, we've never, you've never been either, have you? Um, I went to... Uh... So if you go straight through Portland, through Washington, and then you take the ferry over to Canada, Victoria Island, is that? Yes, Victoria Island, yes. Yes, I did that once for like a couple of days, but that was like yeah, 15 years ago or something. It yeah. was just for like a few days. And so I barely remember. I remember it being beautiful and lots of flowers. And the hotel I stayed in was over a nightclub, which was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, and, and so that was the one time. <laughs> but we do want to do that. And again, we, we are serious. I mean, if you guys ever want to come out, you guys have a place to stay. We'd love to show you around and take you out to the ranch and stuff. Thank you. I'm and so same with you guys. I mean, come you know, to Montreal. Yep. <laughs> you gotta come. There's so many music festivals in the summer going on. So much stuff to see, especially in the summer. It's it's just bustling with with whole different. For two months, they shut down the main yep. street is St. Catherine Street, mm -hmm. and they shut down a whole section. And they have festivals running back to back for two months solid. We have a, a friend, uh, his name is Glenn, and he works for, uh, well, he's an independent contractor, but he helps run some of those music festivals, and he does one in Montreal. So I'll have to ask him sure. uh, which one he does. Yep, yes, definitely. And, and definitely, my God. That well, would the, be so amazing. The big, big one is the Just for Laughs Festival. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, that's I'll where ask. Jerry Seinfeld and all those guys come in. It's like a full week of comedians, day and night. They do like big shows, but then they have like the the nasty show, which is all the dirty comics in this one place called Club Soda. <laughs> Like six hours of just every raunch comedian there is. Or That's so. great. I feel like if we came for a music festival, that you guys would just like leave us and <laughs> what we would see you guys like for I have three a, days. It would There's probably no be a music festival of the music we wanted to listen to. <laughs> and I'll be like, I will be somewhere else. <laughs> I'm not Sean Evans, but I try. Right. <laughs> Uh, Do you have wings? You could just bring some wings. Yeah, just bring some wings. It'll be good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'll bring the flute. You bring the wings. We're gonna be fine. New channel. It's a new channel. Rat and wings. Wait, there that sounds go. gross. Rat I don't and know. wings. Rat wings. No, no. That's gross. I don't want that. No. Oh, that's too good. Metal wings. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, we'll work on it. We'll yeah. work on it. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, we got. I I never really been uh, down further uh, than the uh, North uh, States in yeah. in, uh, in America. Mm -hmm. So I would really love to go uh, further. We went one time when we li we lived in Saskatchewan for two years, which is above North Dakota. I worked in the oil fields. I was hauling uh, Bakken oil because I used to be a truck driver years ago. Yeah, <laughs> and in Canada, it's kind of weird because each. Uh, province has their own uh, immigration requirements oh. and it's still federally controlled but for instance in Quebec they have first priority goes to people who speak French mm -hmm. so it can delay you even if you have great all the credentials are there which Xenia has you know three languages she has a master's in psychology all these things she still didn't speak French she would go to like the secondary pile mm. so it would probably take about three years where Saskatchewan literally took us 10 months Oh wow! Okay, they have a need for people, and they have a need for workers. So they're, you know, that's like if you go to the Northwest Territories, they call them above the provinces in Canada, mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, uh, Northwest Territories or Yukon. I've met people there who have immigrated from the Philippines, and they were even able to bring their grandparents because there's such a need of people. Oh wow! So it depends where you go. They each have a quota, and they can set like within the federal realms. They have a lot of play. So we were working in Saskatchewan. They were paying our apartment. Xenia was pregnant with our first child. And we said, we took, with our first daughter, I should say. Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to say, <laughs> I cut poor Chris right I'm out like, of our what? timeline. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> our boys are also children. <laughs> with one of them. I mean, something. Depends somebody. The How many people? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it He's was small. It He's was small. It was a small side. person. I don't know. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. I know. <laughs> when you're down the road, kids, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. <laughs> so I said, let's go down. She's always wanted to see the States. I said, let's go down. We have a couple of days of painting. He offered us a hotel, but I said, we'll go. So we get there, and because she's locked in, she had to have, it's not really a visa, but it's a $10 thing you they clip on your passport. So we go through. We went down through Minot and everywhere, and we decided to come back up to the other side, not knowing that that was a training uh, training border crossing for Canadian uh, uh, Canadian border crossing uh, guards, and they're very strict. So we pull in. She's what five months pregnant. Yeah. They start checking our car. They look over the visas. They look back. They take her away, and we're separated for a good two hours or more. Chris and I are sitting together. They have her. Wow. Then the truck gets hauled in, and they start tearing that to pieces. The dogs are going through it. And we don't know what's going on. And now I'm starting to get really nervous, like, you know, and more and more anxiety. And then they wanted to meet with me and we're in separate rooms. We were there for a good, what, five, six hours? Oh, my God. Yes, I was terrified because yeah. they were interrogating us in separate rooms and we didn't do anything wrong. I felt like a criminal. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, you know, I was pregnant and I didn't, you know, all the stress and everything. So, uh, oh, it was terrible. <laughs> it was the worst. And then we finally find out what had happened because we applied for her to become a permanent resident. We did it legally, but because she came in under a, a, a visitor visa and then we applied... You're not supposed to technically make a life for yourself in this country. Oh, okay. So what was going to happen was she was actually, if we hadn't have told, the only reason why they let us go through is because we told the truth. The lady told us that they were going to put her and Chris that night on a plane because he was born in Latvia on a plane that night in Minot on their way back to Latvia. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, they wouldn't even let us uh, pick up any other belongings or nothing. Yeah. Just transferred right away. Wow. Yeah. I, oh. yeah. <laughs> well, long story short, they let us through. <laughs> yeah. And she said, stay away. Like, don't, until you're a permanent resident, don't go near another border. Yeah. Right. So we go home and you know that sigh of relief. You don't even yeah. breathe on the way home. And then it hit us, that paper that they put on our passport, we got to return that within three months or they consider a AWOL in the States. Oh. Mm -hmm. So we have two choices, drive to Regina, or which is 120 kilometers, or drive down there, which is 75, and give it, because you've got to take it physically back. So we park, you know, you're not supposed to go through. Once you're through a certain point, you can't turn around and go back. Yeah. And we walk out, and that's when that same girl is going back on our shift, and she's like, what are you doing here? And I said, you know, we know we don't want to get in any more trouble, but we remember this and everything happens. She goes, okay, okay, I got it. I'm going to take it in. She took it out because usually you have to be there to sign. She brings it back out. She's like, now go. Like, you, you That's so cool. And it was <laughs> go. years before we went uh, back. Yeah, we were almost scared to do it again. We were terrified. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I but we could have been separated yeah. for years because they would have banned her entry yeah. into Canada for maybe up to five years before she wow. could apply again. Yeah. Wow. That's Your whole life is in somebody else's hands. You know, it's such a helpless no. feeling. That's one of those things like when you're when you're locked, uh, you know, separated and, and kind of locked away that you start thinking like, did I do something wrong and not <laughs> know? Because this right. is this oh, is yeah. way too much for just hanging out at the border. Most definitely. <laughs> Well, yeah, and that's why I think we both went with the truth because we were separated. Well, it's no point of saying something wrong because yeah. you don't know, you know, what's yeah. the other. So I'm like, what is he going to do? I think he's going to tell how it is. Okay, well, I'm going to do the same, you yes. know, and yeah. that's what actually saved us. So. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, if you guys ever want to come down, we're, we're about an hour away from San Francisco, about a little oh. over two hours away from Lake Tahoe. Oh, my God. I mean, we're obviously in Napa, so right. we yeah. got the Napa Valley oh. here. We're... Oh. An hour, hour away from the beach, aside from the San Francisco, like it's just to, beach, towards the west though. coast. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For us, it's a cold beach. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's snowing. Yeah. It's snowing. It's still snowing here. So. Yeah. But, it's yeah. raining here. So you talked about wanting some sun. We can't give you any. We don't have any right now. <laughs> yeah. And if you guys ever want, I mean, we like I said, we've, we've, we've other people we've met like through the podcast. We've they've come and visited. It's been great. So we'd love to have you out. That is so Thank amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, you just might be getting somebody in your doorstep. <laughs> That's great. As long as you guys are okay with dogs, because we do have two dogs. Right? Oh, we love, we love. Okay. Good. Not a problem there. <laughs> I'm actually surprised they're not in here making more noise. They have been. I don't know if you've seen they, the face just like pop up yeah, their every now and then. Yeah. Just like welcome. a little face pop up. <laughs> and what do you have for dogs? Uh, we have two rescues. One's a Doberman and one's a, a Pitbull boxer mix. You really are an 80s guy. Oh, totally. I love that. Totally. I love it. He yeah. loves, he loves, if he can make you cross the street as he's walking down it, he, it makes him laugh. <laughs> yeah. I'll put a spiked collar. We, we had another Doberman that passed away, but he was huge. He was 110 pounds. Well, wow. at, at his biggest, m more right. about 105. But I'd put a, a spiked collar on him and then I'd wear uh, shorts and a tank top and I have a bunch of tattoos and walk down the street and people would be like, nope, no. going across the street. And I'm like, <laughs> if you only knew, like if yeah. you came up, I could do your hair, you know, <laughs> hang out. Which but. is hilarious because he's like the nicest guy. Like if like if there's a grandma like down the street struggling with groceries, he'll just be like, okay, I'll be right back. I have to go help her with her groceries. And I'm like, what, to, what, where are you going? Yeah. Where are you going? Like, but like, yeah, so it's, it's, it's so funny. Cause it's just funny to watch like the nicest guy on the planet and have someone cross wow. the street to yeah, get away from him. Maybe, maybe the nicest guy in like a five foot radius. I wouldn't say. <laughs> yeah, I, have, I have my, I have my dark side too. So. Let's not ruin it totally. Come on. I'm now. sorry. The little dark side. I never heard anyone. So. Right. right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, he's, he's total badass. Like you just crossed the street. <laughs> born in Compton. <laughs> born in Compton. I was born in Linwood. Sorry. Damn it. <laughs> We're gonna get it. so fantastic. It's so fun to watch. I love your dynamic. Thank what you is so in much. the future? What the future holds for you, for you personally, and for the channel? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I I hope to get a lot more comfortable in front of the camera. <laughs> I think you are amazing. You're yeah. fun. No, you're, I mean, you're, 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 you don't want to change like, it. You want to emphasize it. Yeah. <laughs> When it's, 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 I'm much more comfortable with like the, um, out and about, like when just like us chit chatting and things like that. But like when we do the sit down and like being filmed straight ahead, then that's when I get more nervous. So that's the goal to just 
relax mm -hmm. and enjoy life. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think that um, I'd love to, uh, and for us personally to travel more. And then of course we can in incorporate that into like the whole vlog and everything as well. But yeah, I think, I think my answer would be for the vlog, it's just to keep being us and keep putting stuff out there that we like to do and are having fun doing and that we're comfortable uh, that represents us. And then as far as life is just to keep, keep being happy and keep living as fully and as with as much fun and <laughs> craziness as we absolutely can. <laughs> It's, it's like, I, I just, I don't, I don't want to, I mean, we don't get to do it again. Like this is, this is the only time we have, like, we don't, we don't, you know, people like, oh, it's always seems like we're always waiting for the next thing. Like you're in eighth grade for here. It's like, we're waiting to get to high school. And then after high school, waiting to go to college and after college, it's waiting to start a family and then waiting to get the career and then waiting to retire. And then it's, I don't know what happens after that, but I don't, I like it to be right now. Like I just want to kick butt right now and enjoy right now. And, and so that's my goal is just to keep being as crazy as I can be right now. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. I had a friend actually it. today uh, that I grew up with was here. I hadn't seen him in a while. And we were talking about that because we're both in our forties now. And, you know, I was saying about my sister, she never liked turning 40. She's fought it tooth and nail. And to me, it never bothered me. And he said, well, I kind of miss, you know, the old days. And I said, you know, my 40s have probably been the, some of the best years of my life. I got somebody great in my life. I got great kids. I traveled, you know. In my 40s, I've seen almost 25 countries. That's I, great. I never got to do that. I took a train two years ago. My uncle passed away. I, growing up in a small town, nobody travels anywhere. Mm -hmm. and my uncle backpacked in the 80s across Europe and I never got to do the trip and I always wanted to because I always thought he was like a superstar to me you know he'd have all the yeah. coins every time I do a school project it was always his coins and his pamphlets that I would use you know <laughs> I had the real McCoy <laughs> so I had done some traveling already by then and she said why don't you do that trip and I'm like Ugh, you know you're 41 I'm 41 uh, we got other stuff we got to do and I was at a crossroads and then the next morning I woke up and she had booked everything and she said, you're leaving in a couple of days. You got two weeks. So I got a train ticket for 800 That's bucks. So I had, cool. yeah, do know, it now. Do it now. <laughs> and yeah. I landed in Brussels and from Brussels, I went Brussels. I went right away to Luxembourg. I took a fast train to Paris where I walked around for 24 hours with no hotel. I jumped on a plane and flew to Krakow, Poland. I went to Auschwitz, and from there I went all the way down through the Czech Republic to Croatia, and then up through Switzerland, and I did 12 countries in 15 days. Wow, that's so cool. Oh, yeah. That's, that's awesome. so cool. No, but I, I have the similar feeling to you. It's like I don't I don't mind getting older or getting a little slower, getting a little grayer, because I, I mean, my, this has been my philosophy since I was a kid. So when I was going out there, even though I like didn't become the rock star, which of course at 18, I hoped I was, I gave it everything I had and did everything yep. I wanted to. And I'm glad that time was then. I don't want to do that now. Yes, I, exactly. Doing exactly. what we do and the traveling we do and sharing this with Annalise and our little dogs and, and doing that stuff and whatever the future holds, I'm going to, I'm going to kick that in the butt too. And, and 100%. We yeah. actually appreciate it more now at our age. I yeah. really believe that. Yeah. I mean, it's like, like I was kind of talking about like Marco and, and him earlier. It's fun to see other young people do that. I don't look at it and wish that was me. I look at it and think that is so cool because that's what I would have been doing if I was his age now. Yes. You know, and it's I, I just I, I like I like where I'm at. Uh, it is. It's a good place to be. And you have to. That's what I think makes you the most creative and the most uh, appreciative of what you're doing is that. And I think that makes us better people and better for YouTube with that. I agree. I agree. I also think it makes us more empathetic because we understand yeah. where other people are in their life because we were there. We're not trying to be back there. Yes. We can see that and go, oh, that person's just going through this, the same thing I went through this. So I'm okay with letting, that's all right. They're just being them. I don't need to, I don't need to solve all their problems right now. They need to work through it. And I'm, yeah. I'm cool with that. You know, I'm a big junkie for analytics and the more that I'm now building and I've kind of slowed down the initial big jump. Mm -hmm. And more plateauing and getting like the, the 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 connections with the people that are coming back all the time watch our videos and that I've seen our demographic go up and you know the age is in the next bracket now and it's not so much the 13 to 17 now it's like the 25 even more 35 and up has really jumped and that's why you say about empathetic towards each other in our age group we're not so much using each other just sub for sub right, right. 
we're more picky what we'll watch, but we're yeah. also more dedicated to who we pick. Right, mm -hmm. for sure, for sure. And that's a good place to be. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a total anal analytics and stats person too. And it was funny, uh, Zenny, I think earlier on the I Am A Creator, you pulled up the stats of uh, the I Am A Creator and you had the graph and everything. I was totally geeking out. I'm like, oh, wow, look You're at like that. 500, <laughs> mm -hmm, and I see that, and I see that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, can we do this for an hour? Can we just have stats? That would be great. <laughs> that's going to probably be coming soon, actually. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And that it is, is important day. to know. You day know, that's your Friday. audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, do you guys have a bunch more? Are you, you going to live stream again tomorrow? Yes, actually, tomorrow we have a really special live stream. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's going to be a different kind of toned down all girls PJ Saturday party. Oh. Yeah, I, I have a guest lined up, and um, if uh, if you want to tune in, <laughs> then it's gonna be toned down and more like. Are gonna talk about hair? Yeah, because then I'll then I'll be in the chat room. <laughs> and yes, I asked about nighty fight, and the answer was we'll see. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's keep it. To, let's oh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, Andrew is going with the kids to the monster truck. Uh, oh, that's right. Oh, nice. That's right. That's right. You got to yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I I wasn't sure if I'm uh, you know brave enough to do on my own, but uh, <laughs> then oh, I thought, well, great. why not? Uh, I'm just gonna do it in a little bit different space. You're gonna so. have some girl panelists on. And stuff yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. I have a guest. I have a guest or a couple yep. That's great. <laughs> uh, girls, and uh, so we're just gonna do a chit chat. It's gonna be a little bit different format. So tune and in that'll tomorrow. be and it's gonna be at seven, so um, a bit okay. earlier. Yeah, we'll definitely check in and say say hello. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for <laughs> he, sure. He's going to be great for that. I I will definitely be watching the chat over when this is. <laughs> I know there's going to be some juicy ones in there. So. <laughs> You'll see what I wish I was there to say. So. <laughs> we have some guests lined up for the next week as well, and uh, there's more people coming up uh, wanting uh, to be on. Uh, so we're, we are in talks with people as well. I think and, we're over 20 some people that want to yeah. be on the show now. So we're trying That's to cool. schedule it and line up around. Uh, so cool. and uh, yeah and we would love to have you on again because i mean there's so many topics like unboxing i wanted to talk about sure pets i wanted to talk about and, and oh yeah. my god there's so much stuff yeah. and you wanted to talk more music i know right yes more music. <laughs> <laughs> our number one music yeah and then we move on from there yeah gonna be like yeah yeah you two guys talk for an hour before we start recording and then you right. come out <laughs> well, you do that manic monday thing yeah. yeah manic monday is gonna be for you guys for music but i would like to do that sometime yeah, too on that side again. yeah we got it yeah again. for sure i would i mean there's no reason why we can't do this again oh, well yeah. we'd love right. to have you on and we do it as a live stream slash it would be the podcast too so we'd record we'd release the audio as the podcast if you guys would be up for that. Because this is pretty much all we do. This is exactly what the I podcast know. is. Yeah, We would love to be on. We'd be honored okay. to be on. So. Yeah, that would be great. We'll set it up uh, in between <laughs> in between one of the 5 million live streams you guys are doing. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> we would love to. That would be yeah. so great. That's awesome. That's Very cool. <laughs> it's such a pleasure. Honestly, this, I mean, the time just flies by. Like, Yeah. The, well, thank you so, again. Thank you. I, I actually didn't realize it had been that long. Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's what it's the best. You know, look at there's people joining again. Like there's people coming back. I'm just looking at the numbers right. are going up again. <laughs> They're like, you guys still are here. still talking. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind. I mean, we're good for you. Good for all. Well, yeah, sure. Yeah. You guys yeah. are good. That's you got great. a little more time, or do you guys have yeah. to go? No, that, no we, we've got a, a few, a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. We do a little you bit have more. to feed me at some point. Yeah. yeah, yeah I no, no, definitely. I don't want to take any of your time on you. It's yeah. like that. It's, it's pretty, like we do two hours, but it's not uh, written in stone or anything like that. You know, we try to be flexible. Yeah. I find when they go too long, then after a while, people start fading out a lot. Sure. But uh, when when it's going good and the conversation's good, it uh, it's definitely. Rosori and Buck is starting <laughs> to get back to music again. Yeah, you need to do come get through without that. <laughs> we can't get away from it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, wait, thank you. I wanted to ask if you have heard of the event Everton Guitar Bridge, and if so, do you have do you have thought on it? Yes. Have you heard of it? Uh, no. Is that's not the flip tuning, is it? No. It's it's. Uh, I believe that's the one that's patented by Gibson. That's built. Is uh, I'm gonna double check. Okay. 
I'm going to, I'm going to look it up because I just, that's obviously a good it. question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't want to have egg on my face, mm -hmm. so I'm just, but I'm pretty sure. Is it patented bridge system that keeps your guitar in tune under any conditions? Okay. It wasn't the one I was thinking about. Okay. But there's like Gibson, for instance, they have those ones with the tuners built right into that. You know, they automatically tune. Right. Have you ever tried those that? Work? Oh, sorry. Do those work? Uh, yeah, as long as you're not a whammy guy or anything like that. Oh, okay. But if you do a lot onto it, yeah, they'll tend. But the people seem to, but they cost a fortune. That's the only right. thing. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I've, I usually play more rhythm than I do lead, and I, I can beat on my guitar pretty good. So I, I don't know if that would that would work for me. I think I, I, I need to tune all the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mine are so in a tune. I haven't touched them in months. I'm terrified. <laughs> what was funny the other night uh we were recording and um i had something stuck in my head tap root tap yeah but i didn't play that i was it was something i got the guitar to play something it was so out of tune i'm like oh i was so embarrassed. so they started to tune it on the podcast <laughs> on I'm the like, podcast what are you, what are you doing tune right it. now what is <laughs> we're trying to podcast here <laughs> 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 yeah, then the other week I started singing Taproot songs because I couldn't yeah. get it out of my head. Oh, my God. <laughs> it goes sideways real quick with me. Yeah, yeah well, that's what makes it interesting. That's for good listening, you call that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, I don't know if you can see her, but here's our Doberman. Here's a little nose. Oh, there. Oh. That's nine. Say hi, nine. Can you be able to get her up a little higher? Or the camera yeah, can you come up, girl? I don't I know. Don't know if she come, can. come on. Come here. She wants Come to. On. She's thinking about Come it. Come on. Oh. She's about 70 oh. pounds. <laughs> Hi, pretty girl. So beautiful. Oh, yes. And then here's the, here's the other one. Yeah, we won't be able to get the little one up. <laughs> oh. Run away. Okay, go. Go ahead. Okay. Good girl. Magnum. Girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this one's She's just about big as I am. <laughs> She's all floppy. She doesn't she doesn't have her ears cropped or her tail cropped. That's okay. Yeah. Still the feel of them. Oh yeah, for sure. They have it's the slickest best. fur. Like it's something like you know, it's so streamlined on shiny, yeah. 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 Yes, yeah, so an actual like a natural gloss or something like that. Okay, you gotta move. Yeah, now everybody's super excited yeah. and they're all like right. You wanna come up? <laughs> Do you want to come up? Come here. They all everybody wants to be on camera. Yeah. <laughs> our little, our little, uh, our little pit bull. He's he's really sensitive and really shy, so he gets like all concerned. Like if something's out of place, he's like, "Nope, I'm going back to bed. I can't uh -huh. handle this." Right. You, you if move the that TV's chair. Too loud. Yeah. He has to go to bed. It he's took. Like, he's yeah. he's five years old now. It took four years for him to stay in the room while I played guitar and not an acoustic. I'm not nothing loud because he was like, "Nope, I've had enough of you. I'm gone." <laughs> yeah. That's funny. You have a voice for radio. Yes. Who? You. 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 Oh, God, is I, that good? You know, oh. like, I always take that, and I've always gotten like, you know, you'd make a good lawyer. I'm like, I don't know if those are common. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what you're telling me. <laughs> Every time you talk, I expect you to say like, no, a 95 KM, KM, KM. Here we are with the sports. That one. I just expect it to come bursting out at any moment. <laughs> and you said voice, or did you say I have a good face for radio? <laughs> Your like face is good for everything. I'm not getting no, on. No. <laughs> He's like, that's funny. He thought I said voice. Nah, silly guy. No, you do, you don't have to get voice training. That's why I say it. It's very clear, concise. It's it's. Uh... Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I think I won my tickets from him for the monster truck. <laughs> You're caller nine. <laughs> Oh, I have a funny story about that. So there's a, a local radio, obviously. It's a local <laughs> radio station out here. And they were giving away tickets to see, uh, not Shine Down. It was before them. Uh, what's a, hurt your head now, baby, just spit me out. Don't talk about. Um, anyway, <laughs> some, some freaking band that starts with an S. Uh, and it was a bunch of bands. And so they're like, we're going to, it was the, their call numbers were 97 3. So they're going to, they said, we're going to ca take callers 9, 7, and 3, and you win tickets to show. And so I dialed up and they're like, congratulations, you're caller 9. And I'm like, okay, I'll try again and hung up. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't going to get through. Oh, no. I'm like, oh. I could only imagine how much fun they had with that. Like we probably <laughs> played that for a month. <laughs> oh oh no. no! Yeah, it was That's so awful. Yeah, it was. Oh great. I do a lot of things like that <laughs> in my life. I figure if someone's gonna shoot me in the foot, it might as well be myself. 
my aim is not taking control of the situation. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It's like I did that on purpose. So, so uh, I'm always monster making a plus. <laughs> so, how did you win the monster? I didn't hear the story of how you actually won the monster truck ticket. Oh my god, I needed a piece for my car, and they had this. Uh, uh, you know, one of these pieces you can get at a scrapyard for ten dollars, just pay five hundred dollars the Mazda. Right. So my friend and I went, and there was this new. Um, we call them like they're, it's a weird. I'm sure you guys had them too. It's scrapyards, but you take the pieces off yourself. You tell oh, yeah. them what your car model is. You go in the lines. Yeah, pick and pull places. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. And they open this new location. It's a big chain, and they had the French radio station there. So we walked in, and they're like, "Oh, spin the wheel, spin the wheel." They're all speaking French, and I'm like, "You know what? No, no I'm good." And my friend <laughs> asked him, and he doesn't speak any French. And he's like, "What?" <laughs> they, they explained it to him. And he's like, "Is it free?" And he's like, "Yes." He goes, "Okay." <laughs> he spins the wheel. He wins two tickets. Oh wow! So he wants to take me, but I'm feeling bad because I'm like, you know what? If anybody's gonna go, I'd rather my ten year old son. But I don't want to put him on the spot. So I'm like, you know, I appreciate it, but maybe this friend would like to go more. Well, at the time he won it, they asked me to fill in a ballot. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm here now. So I filled in the ballot, and then they called a couple days later, and my last name is French, so he was speaking all French. But I just, if I don't mind speaking French, but it's on my own time. I'm, you know, I'll yeah I'm English first and foremost. And he goes, oh. You speak English, and I'm like, "Yep." He goes, "Well, this is kind of weird." He goes, "This is a French radio station, and it said the name of it, and you just won four VIP tickets to this Monster Jam thing." Wow! I'm like, "Are you sure I don't win anything?" I said, "I said, are you sure my ticket wasn't stuck to somebody else's?" Like, they're probably because <laughs> I never win. I'm always the guy that, "Oh, you're only one away." Right. <laughs> so, you're number eight. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's true. I never thought we were like Bobsy twins. <laughs> so my friend that was here today, I was telling you about we were talking about our 40s. He's visiting. His sister lives here. She had a raffle at school. They were raising money for their Europe trip. She's a teacher, and she won two tickets to this thing. So now I know everybody that I know is going. Oh, that's so this. cool. <laughs> that's so great. We're such a bunch of freeloaders. You know? <laughs> Best way. That's the That's way the to go. Way. Yeah, it's but always it's a little more fun. fun when it's free. <laughs> I haven't taken my kids, all three of them, in a long time because of the age gap. Uh huh. You know, that never works out. My oldest son, he lives here now in Montreal on his own. So tomorrow there will be the three of them. So I'll have my twenty-year-old, my ten, my eleven-year-old, and my seven-year-old. So. Oh, that so cool. Yeah, because be I haven't taken. I haven't gone since my oldest one was eight. That's this is so the last cool. time we went to it, so it's going to be fun to go with them. And we actually got the pit party, which I didn't even realize for the first few days. Oh, that's going to be a so, blast. Yeah, they'll be able to go down and see the trucks live and everything. That's neat. Do you have to wear earplugs? Is it, like, super loud? Yeah, I, I already bought some. So my daughter reminded me. Right. <laughs> we were in the store, yeah. so she, she kept on the ball. So she's yeah, her this... mother's child. <laughs> <laughs> got to protect the ears. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So yeah, they're going tomorrow and yeah. I'm home. <laughs> yeah. So that's where the pajama party thing came from. So. Perfect. Cool. Perfect. <laughs> well, yeah, and I, I'm glad she's doing it on her own like that. Why not? You know, and do something her way. Oh, you, know? you guys will have to bear with me because I don't know the controls. I don't know anything. So we're gonna try and see. It's gonna be fun. No, it's gonna be great. Yeah. That'll be so good. <laughs> I'm gonna wear my PJs just to be part of it. There you go. Now there's another Perfect. Sport. There mm -hmm. you go. <laughs> Yeah, it's That's, always funny too. Like I, you know, with the the live streams, like when I watch you guys or or watch some of the others, that it's like you almost want to talk back. Like you're like, oh yeah, I totally know what you're doing. So you're in the chat, but you're like, this isn't gonna come across in chat. You're like, oh, right. I know. <laughs> I'll just say LOL. Okay, you know what I mean. <laughs> so typing is not my forte. I never get yeah. to come by the time I by the time I work out all my typos, it's gonna yeah. be like thirty minutes later, and you'll be like, right. why? Why is Halos and Heathens saying, what are they talking about? Pajamas now. We'll just try it again. <laughs> and you're like me. You have this like a Bob Newhart type of humor, and it never yeah. does well going over type. <laughs> Nobody gets it. <laughs> right. Yeah. The way people are like, yeah, it, don't it, what you're it's saying. like the sarcasm thing. It just it doesn't translate. They're right. like, no, everything's fine. You're like, that's not what I meant. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're so far off the point, but you yeah. know what? <laughs> I'm not typing it again because it'll just make it worse. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or um, next time I'm typing it in all caps so they really understand. Yeah, and then they get offended. <laughs> right. Why are you yelling at me? Oh, it's a yeah. joke. Yeah. That's too. 
that's our uh, that's oh. our kids here. Oh, uh, cool! Yeah, that's that's adorable. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's, that's all. yeah. We have covered all the age differences. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll never say we don't understand an age because we've been there yeah. at some point in our life. Oh, you right. have a toddler. Yeah. yeah. I'm a teenager. Yes, you <laughs> have that too. <laughs> so, any <Right>. questions? <laughs> All covered. Yeah. See, that'll be one of the live vlogs. You're like, all right, let's talk about teenagers today. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Any parenting yeah. questions? Just bring it on. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure my oldest son would be very proud to have that yeah, happen. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Might get disowned at that point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Blocked. Yeah. Yeah. So, did you just block me on Facebook? Yeah, Dad. Yeah, exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I tell him that. Oh, you and Dad are gonna have a great time. We'll vlog together, you and Dad. And like, <laughs> I lay it on thick, you know. He's horrified. <laughs> Mortified. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Oh, that's too good. That's one of the funny things about uh, me and Niels, we uh, met old when we were older, but neither one of us um, had, had kids. And uh, is it okay if I say that Neil can't have oh, kids? Oh, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, when she said, is it okay if I say, I'm like, wait, I'm what, are you, anyway. what are you going to say? <laughs> I mean, so it's still it okay. would, yeah. I mean, so it was just kind of that thing that it ended up working out for us. It, like, as we were talking earlier, like in that weird way, it was meant to be that we yeah, met exactly. at a later time, yeah. you know? And, and it's not the holy grail of everything. And I mean, that's the nice thing about this day and age. You know, one time it was such a pressure. And I look at my parents' age and what they went through. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, my mother, I don't want to get too much into their personal, but they had uh, a lot of trouble. And that's why I was adopted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they had my sister later on, you know, and the doctor had told her once she was pregnant, she said, this one will definitely, you know, this is it. Yeah. In good shape now, you know, cause it took yeah. a lot of the stress away. <laughs> and I, uh, I've always appreciated, like some people would ask me like, does it bother you or adopted, you know, especially old girlfriends used to ask me a lot. And it never did. Like I always thought I was the luckiest person on the face of the earth. Cause there were so many kids that weren't wanted. Yeah. Right. It was the yeah. ultimate gift. Yeah, no, I agree. My, well, I mean, my situation, my mom's my biological mom, but my my dad's actually, I mean, what most people call a stepdad, but was in my life since I was a year and a half or two years old. And my, my biological dad wanted nothing to do with us. And I feel super lucky to have somebody who said, you know, I met my mom and then met me and said, yeah, I want to be, I'm choosing to be the father of this child. Mm -hmm. And I feel totally lucky. And my, my dad and I are are super, super close. In fact, he gave Annalise away at our, our wedding. Yeah. So, oh, we're, yeah. Wow. And it's funny because we're super, de he's, he's very conservative and he's very, very like strict and, and everything by the book. And then there's, there's me who's not exactly that way, but we're <laughs> super close and, and, you know, best friends. So it's, I, I, I understand where you're coming from. And, and I, I love the fact that my life, turned out that way and that he's my dad so well the whole point of a dad to me is somebody that's special yeah right. and is there for you about who gave birth to you you know uh, yeah. I mean, like so they would ask me sometimes would you want to find you? even my mother is right from the get-go always was very adamant you know we love you with all our heart but if you ever want to we'll be the first ones to yeah help you yeah right. and i realized i was i was born in the 70s in a small fishing town french quebec which was extremely strong catholic at the time Mm -hmm. Very isolated. Her, my mother was my birth mother was eighteen. It's, it wasn't hard to put together why I was up for adoption. Right, right, right. And why mess up her life? I want yeah. her to have a great life. I hope she had kids later on if that's what she wanted. And I'm not bitter at her with her. And I'm not. I I got a great family. I'm not searching for anything because I'm not missing anything. Yeah. I that's used to great. tell my mother when I was a teenager years. She'd bring it up once in a while, and she was always so protective, making sure that I was always good with it. And I would say. Uh, to her friends, oh, I remember how my mother used to tell me that I was adopted. She'd make all of us stand, all my family in the circle in the kitchen and say, one of these things do not belong here. They'd all jump away and laugh at me. But I said, I joke because it doesn't bother me. That's a great thing. You know, it's right, not really right. heartbroken. Yeah. No, that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah dark, so... dark sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so for us, so for us, fortunately, it it, it I mean, it, it all worked out. I right. mean, obviously, if 
if Annalise had a child from previous, it wouldn't have stopped me from, you know, being with her or wanting to. But the fact that, you know, and it's funny because my mom always wanted grandkids and she's like, when are you going to have a grandkid? And I'm like, mom, you know, I can't have kids. I don't know. <laughs> this happened at a very young age. I don't know what you're hoping is going to happen. <laughs> so I give you dogs. <laughs> you can be right. grandma to the dogs, you know. Just about the and, picture. But it often yeah. comes, uh, they become like babies. Uh, of course. Know, like your sister too. Yeah. Uh, they have had dogs since ever. And and the, the way they treat them, I think even better sometimes yeah. than parents do, do kids. It's amazing. That's their babies. And the know? bond is there. A yeah. bond is a bond. Yeah, that's... and especially for people that don't, I mean, I, I would never put like having a dog the same as having a child. I mean, we didn't give birth to the dog. You know, there's a whole different, but for people that never had that experience of having a kid, yeah. you, get, you get this crazy, <laughs> weird attachment yeah. to these little furry things that are running around and then spend all these, oh, oh, he must not be feeling good today. And it's it's a dog. The dog's looking at us like, I'm going to go lick my butt. In the other <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, man. You're some, really some funny. children that do that dog. too. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go through the cat's litter box now. So, <laughs> you pretend that I'm your kid, okay, buddy? Good luck. So, but yeah. an animal is always dependent on you. So, like, you get that bond the whole life with yeah. them. Oh, the yeah, kids grow up and they start distancing themselves from you as they get the dog. The, a pet will always have that attachment with you. Right. It's a false sense of security until somebody else has a stake and then the dog disappears. You're like, oh, I guess the dog doesn't like me that much. He wants to go with the snacks. But yeah, it's funny. now my um, my sister and I are out of the house, obviously, and my mom on her, on her nightstand, she doesn't have a picture of the family. She has a picture of her poodle. Oh, my God. I'm like, seriously, you have kids and you don't have pictures of your kids. She's like, yeah, but... It is the poodle. And she just laughs. She doesn't yeah. move it or defend she, herself. She just yeah. laughs like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my mom was oh my is cracking up here a lot. <laughs> this this little Argentinian woman with this thick accent, and she like she like <laughs> leaves. I'm like, okay, thanks, mom. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Oh I love God. you too, mom. He's such a storyteller. <laughs> Oh my! And then oh. the funny thing: their freaking poodle has one eye. It's not even a, a oh pretty poodle. <laughs> <laughs> they named it. They named him Maximilium because my mom thought the name was Maximilium, not Maximilian. So oh it's my god! My mother, this is crazy. Translation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're white poodle. <laughs> they, they had a golden retriever before that they named Sir Sergeant Oliver. I'm like, so what military is he in? Is he a sir or is he a sergeant? I'm like, what it was Sir Sergeant? And then Max is a captain? Max is captain. Oh my god, oh my get the whole regiment going. <laughs> oh my poor mother. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh my god almighty. That is so funny. <laughs> you are such a storyteller. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, we have to have a couple of beers some night on this together. Yeah. Would, yes, for sure. Some party with the push studio. Yes. Oh, yeah. wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. That would be amazing. That. Yeah. We sure. well, you guys come visit and we'll just do like a live stream the whole time. We'll just <laughs> we'll set up a couple cameras, put it on both channels, and it'll just go. It'll just be I don't want to get I didn't want to get in trouble. I thought Xenny would read it, but you've been getting a couple of questions about the guitars they're seeing. The both of us are saying guitars, guitars, guitars. <laughs> and that is proof. Trackhead Studios said it. Yeah. And so did Mill Hill Mud Mowers. I see <laughs> guitars everywhere. Well, yeah, you have you have guitars. I see your guitars there. Oh, I don't have like you have though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll just run what's what's hanging on the walls. I have a an Ibanez acoustic. He has more. He's looking in front of him. He has more. <laughs> I have an Ibanez oh, yeah, there's, there's, there's two over here, yeah. and then there's uh five here. So there's seven in this room. Yeah. Oh my so God. there's an Ibanez acoustic over there. I have a Tommy Thayer uh, Les Paul uh, over here, and then oh wow, uh, it's an Epiphone. It's not the real. It's the Tommy Thayer. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, but still that's a great guitar. Great guitar. Then I have I have this is one of my favorites. I have the old BC Rich Warlock. That's, oh my God! I seen that today in one of your videos. I just seen the bottom. I knew right away that uh, has seen better days. I have a behind oh. me is a BC, uh, gray BC Rich Gunslinger. Then we've got the uh, the squire, the what do you call it? The Strat. Hello Kitty Strat. Yep. And um, that yellow guitar that's right behind me, my uh, cousin gave to me. 
it's called the Cruiser. It's like a super inexpensive guitar, but he had it in his uh, garage for the longest time. And he's friends with the guitar player from the Doobie Brothers. So it was the, the guitar that they just had around the house for when he would come and visit. So he oh just had a guitar to strum. Wow. I have a 12 string. You're stuck with that thing. <laughs> no. I have a 12 string uh, Fender acoustic. Oh, no. man. That's, uh, I think that's all. I don't think I have any under the bed. That's it. I think you've I might have. I might. <laughs> you got some hit away on you. I might have another guns, uh, uh, BC Rich gunslinger under the bed. I might. Oh my God, that is unbelievable. That warlock yeah. is something else. There's not. Yeah, really... a, so it used to be bright red, and then I, um, I pulled all the paint off. It's actually burnt right here on the back. Because I, I got, see. I got really frustrated with it one day. We were writing. Uh, we were in the studio writing songs, and the studio had a fireplace, and you, you know, just stick it in there. Being a you know a young aggressive rock star guy threw it across the room and it landed in the fireplace, and I left it. I'm like I'm not, I'm not writing this song, man. It's too. <laughs> and That's so, the black side of you. You were talking yeah. about the nice well, guy and crossing the street. Like, That's the black side. Like I wanted everyone to be like, ooh, wow, he's really emotional lead singer, guitar player guy, and they all looked at me like you're an idiot. Go get your guitar. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Like, do you have another one? Yeah. You better go get that. Moron. <laughs> you can never have enough guitars. Yeah. <laughs> so, that was back when he just had the one guitar. <laughs> so let's hear about your guitars, because I saw well, them on when, the I, when I worked with a music company, because we're a distributor, like the deals that would come out, and I would write the pages, and we were available to buy them. But I mean, if you buy everything, you might as well not even have a job anymore. <laughs> right. So it was very hard on a monthly basis. I had pearl kits. I can't even say what they would go for, but literally pennies on the dollar. Like, wow. But where do you put it? You know, yeah. if you don't have a place. Right. Yeah. yeah. I got, I'm just going to turn the camera for a second. I don't got much anymore, but. Sure, they're going to see it. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. can see. Okay. Nice. <laughs> That's my, uh, I had an RGX 521 Yamaha when I was younger. And that was my favorite guitar because I had a hologram style body. Mm -hmm. And my sister was really hurting for money. Uh, for something like not drug, nothing like that. I forget now if it was part for rent or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I ended up pawning in the guitar for next to nothing to get her the money, and I could never find one ever again. Oh. And then finally, what, two years ago? I think just before we took the kids to Europe. Yeah. The black one came on the market. Mine was blue. And I said, well, you know what? It's the closest I'm ever going to get to having that guitar again. So I went and bought it, and it was a great guitar. And then literally about a week and a half later, the blue one showed up in the market. And I'm like, hon, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to say, she's a very good sport because she knew I desperately wanted to try and get one again. I said, I'll even sell the black one. Yeah. No hard feelings. No, I couldn't do that. You know, so I, I, you guys even came with me. Yeah, we came Because I think to keep oh, me calm until I got there. Because <laughs> I had to drive for like an hour to get to the place. <laughs> And I bought the second one, so now I have one tuned a half step down and at uh, standard, so I don't have to bother. That was my justification to keep both. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And I love the guitars. And I, I have uh, down below is the, uh, that's when I worked for Jam. That's the uh, Parker Fly. Cool. Wow. I don't know if you've ever seen those before. Yeah. They're kind of a weird guitar. They got an acoustic piezo pickup under the bridge. Oh, really? With a splitter, so you can get this amazing dual sound. Don't mind the dust and the dirt. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm there with you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I got a bit of an arthritis in my hands, and through the winter, I couldn't play much, so they've been just sitting for months, but i got to restring them and clean them. And the amplifier is a Johnson that was made by Digitech and uh, Johnson Amplification. It was one of the first modeling amps to ever come out. Oh, very cool. And you got to have an engineer's degree to get a sound out of it. That's not right. generic. <laughs> but it's like page inside a page inside a page for every setting that you use. Sure. But that, it's a Johnson JM 150, and it's got two 12-inch Celestians in it. Very cool. And it's got a 12 uh, – oh, no, it's too heavy. I'm not going to pick it up. It's a big foot controller, the big yeah, metal type. Lift okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With the old-time professional toggle switch selectors into it. Very cool. But, like, I have my five sounds that I'm good with, and, you know, I can pretty much do whatever I want in those. So I could buy, like, a Digitech, you know, effects pedal or something just to – and keep it on clean, but yeah. – yeah. Oh, That's really that? cool. Oh, that thing out there? Yeah. Oh, that piece of junk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of gadgetry and music stuff. Uh, yeah. But I enjoy him playing because, yeah. I don't know, I, I just love it. Uh, I, sometimes he plays and he thinks I'm not listening, but I'm just hiding behind the door so he doesn't get bothered. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Sitting on the floor and listening to him playing because I don't want him to get interrupted, you know. 
That's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's like speaking a language when you haven't spoken in a while. You're always hard on yourself because you, you there's nothing worse than relearning something. Yeah, and that's where my frustrations come out in their fullest. You know. Yeah. So that's always that's the thing I deal with a lot now. So I play for a while and then I get angry at myself and then don't play for a bit and uh, you know, but that's those Hagstrom guitars that we brought back. I was saying a while ago. Okay. Yeah, those were the ones made in Sweden. That black one there, it's got that Gretsch look to it. Yes, yes. And those were all the old traditional ones like that. See, there was 85 switchers on the side. and Yeah. yeah they were used by the Beatles and a couple other ones. And, the, and they're like um, a lot of people like collecting old cars. Yeah. They had a real sentimental spot for these. So that's uh, they were fun to bring. It was my boss's dream for years because he used to distribute them. And then when they went out in 81, they vanished. And he always wanted to bring them back. So he had finally the money. We were a huge company. He said, you know what? I'm bringing them back. That's so cool. Yeah. And they've, they've been doing well with them. You know, they, they're, a, they're a niche guitar, but. I'm more and more thinking about that Manic Monday Live. Look, Trackhouse Studios <laughs> is talking about his guitars. He wants to come on and talk about his collection. Mill Hill Bud Bowers is talking about the Fender Mustang. If he has an amp. I mean, you guys, good. you gotta do this. We gotta come back. Right. Yeah, Neil is in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'd love to be a guest on that. Yeah, Manic Monday. Yeah, that would We're be fun. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a really great chat. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I mean, the car guys are doing it and everything else. Sure. Why do it about oh, yeah. the cars? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I have a bunch of friends who would love to to check that out. Yeah. Yeah, well, that would be cool. The more people like into it, and if they're willing to come on, you know, we can switch between people. And oh yeah, yeah. Like yeah. just showing off, like talking about their guitars and that and everything else. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I mean the week after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's that's a do. That's a do. I like it. Well, everybody loving their guitars. Yeah. Just <laughs> that could go on out. for Mondays for years. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. And you guys want to talk about how much you love our guitars and love us talking about them and uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm busy on Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> <So. laughs> I'm the one that he insisted on uh, in buying that guitar, and like I'm stopping from getting rid of guitars. So yeah, I was funny. I don't I was, mind it. I just I was gonna sell the uh, the Tommy Thayer because it's it's gone up in value, and I don't since I don't play live. I'm like I don't need all these guitars. You know, I have my practice amp. I still have my half stack. I'm like I don't. I'm like I I can get you know a few. Yeah, I and get, I said no. And she's like no. I, I it's like not that like guitar. we're gonna go out and buy them again. Yeah, you know. So she's like, like just freaking keep it. And we like, already have it, so let's just. Yeah, you're not like starving to death and having to go yeah. panning for food, so yeah, it's not right. going to hang on the wall, you know. So, yeah, she was like, so "What are you gonna What are you gonna buy with it? You're You're gonna end up. You know, we're gonna spend the money on something goofy, and then that'll be gone, and you'll never have the. You, you won't be able to get that guitar probably again without spending a ton of money. So, right. but you know, that's what true support is. I mean, I know you we were joking oh, yeah. a little bit talking about in that, but the to show that you respect what he has like you know in that that really is nice to see it's, it's oh she she does she does amazing things like that all the time we were in uh in reno uh what a month ago and my mom had just left to go back to argentina to visit family and i had gone on a trip with her well once as a as a little baby but uh about seven years ago we went together back to argentina and right so, before we met, actually. Yeah. Really? And so Annalise, we were there. And my mom's my mom's health isn't great. It's not terrible, but it's not great. And she's getting older. And Annalise says, you know what? You should go back with your mom next year wow. so you guys can do one more trip. And I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, we'll figure it out. She goes, yeah. and it's really not necessarily the money thing. It's more because we have the dogs and it would be like two or three weeks and this and that. And she's like, well, just do it. We'll figure it out. Yeah. And anyway. so, yeah. So she, she Annalise does things like that all the time. That's okay. great. And, and, really and I think it's such a good thing to do, exactly, because everything else can be figured out. But yeah. 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 Like, Xenia became friends with one of my sister's friends, and then we all got together one time, and she's like, and I can't believe her. And like she's like, oh, Andrew's going on his next trip, and he's going to Great Britain, and she's not going. And I'm thinking, I told my husband that night. She might be happy, but don't expect that here, you know, as a joke, <laughs> way, you know. <laughs> but I thought, like, you know, that's that is true. How amazing it is to have somebody that actually, especially if you're married before, and you have a different way of looking at the world now. You appreciate somebody who's happy for you. Oh yeah, yeah. And so like we were saying earlier, I mean, this is the only life we got. I don't want to hold Annalise back. I want her yeah. to do all those things and experience all the things she wants to experience. And then I want him to share with me, but that's yep. it. I don't want to say like, no, don't do that. Or you can't go there or, or no do live. 
I want to be part of your life. I don't want to restrict you in any way. Well, that's what we were saying. We were actually was it last night we were talking about traveling with kids. And mm -hmm. how many of my people that I know say, Oh, well, no, I can't go there. I got the kids. Our kids from day one are my daughter is seven and she's been in every province in camp. Uh, oh, no, she's missing two, I think, because of her that she missed one trip. Yes, yeah. Our eleven year old's been in every province well, in Canada. Her, so yeah, she was technically <laughs> there. <laughs> she had a front row seat for everything. So <laughs> they've been in seven countries in Europe. They've uh, we spent a week in Iceland when my daughter was four, my son was eight, in a Honda Civic with no hotels, just wow. traveling along the midnight sun in Iceland. Wow. wow. Four That's days in Denmark. Yeah. They've been, yeah. Uh, They've been to through Latvia. They've gone through Lithuania. We've taken them down almost to Kilingrad and our car road trips. And there's never a better time than now. And and that's why yeah. I was encouraging Andrew so much to go like on the Europe trip and think, like you know Iceland <laughs> mm. because uh, you got you got to do it. Like what, when else? When, right. when is going to yeah. be the time? There's always going to be something else. The life is going to come in between work and things that you have to do. You're just going to make time if if you want it to happen. Not gonna yeah. happen in its own. So, like, if you've seen the pictures that are above us when I was moving a while ago, that's yeah. These pictures, these are all from that train trip that I took in oh, Europe. Wow. That's yeah, what, everybody keeps asking us all the time. Yeah. Even today in the I'm Creator stream, is like, what is your picture behind you? Yeah, <laughs> I took one from every country that I visited. Oh, that's great. And then over there is our ones that we did together from uh, like Northern Europe and Iceland, Sweden, and. And I'm gonna see if you're gonna. Yeah, I won't see that again. one. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <There's some laughs> yeah. Like thanks to Exenia, I've just missing Portugal and Italy, and I've done every country from Iceland to Spain. That is so cool, and it, you know, it's it's funny we're talking about the pictures. It is funny too, as how we watch videos or we do. I always look in the background to see like what's back there. What yes. is that picture? Right. What is that? What is that? It's it, it's like you want to. Peek it makes in. me super conscious. I'm like, can they they can see that weird wall heater that we have? Yeah. Today. <laughs> Our 1950s wall heater. Yeah. You guys are so much. I'm telling you, we're all like bumps and turns. Like everything you say, I hear her say, yeah, and yeah. vice versa. <laughs> and I'm always yeah. like, what about this shot? Can you see the dirty dishes in the sink? Yeah. Just like, just move that one. Just move that one. So well, it was funny because like the desk, one, the you know? desk behind us, like I'm like, oh, I gotta clean that. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Gotta move the bills. Yeah. <laughs> you know? We yeah, got a funny. cushion. We put cushion here because we moved couches and there's a little bit of the paint worn. And every time we do this, Xenia's gonna put cushions under the other cushion to cover right. where the couch was before. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And the couch with me, the the cushion's gone in 30 seconds. It's oh like, yeah. Oh. No, it's it's funny. It's like okay, gotta go. I pick up all the dog toys. I do all this stuff. Yeah. It's like. Put the paper towels on the other side. Okay, right. good. We're set to go. And then the whole time we're filming, the dogs are pulling the toys back out. Like there's, <laughs> right. there's like a couple videos we don't like. We know, we can hear them. We know they're around, but they're doing all this weird stuff in the background. They're like pulling their toys back out and like yeah. wandering around, and like they come up behind us and like look at us and then but we don't always that we normally see them but we don't always see them yeah. so i watch the videos back and i'm like oh yeah <laughs> there's the, the cat cleaning himself on the counter we're like oh, that's that. that's so whole funny. different world behind yeah. it yeah it's hilarious yeah. i love it guys listen it's yeah. been so amazing oh, I, I, this has been so such fun I forgot that we were even doing this really. Yeah, <laughs> really like around, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People have been so patient tonight because usually we're going lots back to everybody. And this was just <laughs> so amazing to sit and have a chat like this with you guys. Well, thank you so much again uh, for having us on. And, and thank you to everybody who watched and who will watch and who right. is watching now that it's not live and who hung out in the in the chat room very much. <laughs> just listen to us talk yeah. about guitars. <laughs> very, very much appreciated. And we, we would love to have you guys on. Uh, uh, on our channel and on the, the podcast and do all that. And anytime you guys want us back, we'd love to, to hang out again. And again, come visit. Yep. <laughs> Thank you so much. And sure. the same as you guys. You want to do a travel vlog? Montreal looks really good on film. All right. So. All right. Yeah, for sure. That would be awesome. And please, if you can, check out that video she brought back the 80s because it's made for yes. you. I swear yes. to God. <laughs> I will definitely check it out. The funny part of that video was only supposed to be a minute long, but the song was so good I kept extending and <laughs> done all the footage and ways to write it in. So <laughs> that is great. It was amazing having you. Yeah.
Thank yeah. you so much. Thank I don't you. know what to say. Usually we're pretty good at this at the yes. end. We're kind of like right into it. You well, know? have a good night and uh, we'll yeah. see you again very, very soon. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sounds good, guys. Take care, yeah. guys. Bye. Thank Bye. you so much and keep creating. We're waiting for new stuff. <laughs> for sure. Thank you again. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Guys, that was thank that was so amazing, wasn't it? Like, yeah, you know, my god, the time just flew. I yeah. I can't believe that. That's what happens sometimes. And uh, we have amazing guests and uh, we keep talking and I hope you guys keep enjoying that. Uh, I kept trying to get back to the chat and yeah. usually yes, we are better at that. <laughs> uh, so but I, I seen you guys had your own thing as well and commented on the music and on travel and on pets as well. Thank you so much everybody for coming. Uh, Geeks is still here. Yes, Geeks, uh, oh, you are a trooper. It was so nice having you. Oh. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for all the support. Please uh, don't forget to go and check out the channel of Halos and Heavens for yes. our guests. Um, go and check it out. Everybody we have on, we keep noticing, you know, like, and more and more we go, the more similarities with so many people. These guys tonight was just unbelievable. Yeah. And it's a, a message about how we're all so much alike here and what we're doing. And it feels foreign until you get to know people and that's what i think is the biggest mission of our channel since the get-go since we started doing the live streams i should say and like tonight was such great proof of that again yeah. and you'll never watch their videos the same way again having this connection with them is it's phenomenal oh it gets so personal yeah. and i'm what i was kept thinking it's so amazing you know you always think like well you you, you get to meet the stranger because yeah. i mean we are strangers you know yeah. and it's like well what you're gonna talk and what you're gonna say but then we get on and it's like with all the yeah. guests that we had before it's like we have known each other forever yep. it's like where is that magic how does it happen whether yep. you can just keep talking for hours on end like we have known each other for such a long time it's huh. uh I it's, like geeks from, uh, yeah this is gonna be such a great fan community oh you are so right and this is the way to do it is just getting like you can learn so much about somebody in two hours and you'll always have that and even if you guys aren't the ones directly talking to them at the moment there's nothing stopping you from talking to them the next day Getting together, mingling like that, uh, it, it, you're going to find people that you really, really bond with. TriStar Traveler is a great show. Thank you so Bottle much. Bottle caps. I've Bottle seen caps, you bit yeah. in and out. Thank you yes. for sticking by. <laughs> and we Joe, like, I love, that's what I love about Bottle Cap. Bottle Cap has been a huge support right from the get-go. I mean, I would be brokenhearted not to see you in, in the chat. So. <laughs> Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. And my beard says hi to you too as well, Bottle Caps. Somebody asked today if you had a haircut since last night. No. I was planning to. Yeah. Which I. Uh, yeah. She got... We'll see next time if he has it done or not. Yeah. It's that winter fur. So yeah. At least this is gone. This this was. Like maybe that. that's what they refer to hair. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. It's just the look of it. So, God. Oh, uh, and uh, don't forget to, to tune in tomorrow. We're yeah. uh, going to be going out a bit earlier at 7 p.m. And it's going to be all girls, PJ party, a little yeah. bit different format, toned down, just a chit chat, a very, very informal That's gonna uh, be fun, Saturday though. night. Yeah, so yeah. join in in your PJs or not. Join in, ask questions, and just hang out uh, for an hour or so. <laughs> I have, I have uh, guests lined up as well. So that's going to mm. be fun. No hill mud more as well. We'll all be supporting each other, and we definitely want you on too to get to, to do a night with guitars. You know, yeah. Guitar. Well, I think we are going to do that Manic yeah. Monday, and I'm going to round up all the guitar geeks yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and get them on at the same time. So just keep your eyes open on Twitter uh, for the announcement of the day. Probably not next week, definitely, but maybe yeah. the week. Uh, Bottle cats after. is very excited about PJ party. Yes, Bottle cats. Be good. <laughs> <laughs> Come on tomorrow, 7 yeah. p.m., an hour earlier. So don't forget that. Okay. Yeah. Let's see here just before we go. Let's put up this one here. So TriStar, TriStar Travelers, Mill Hill Mud Mowers, Geeks General. I, 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 I'm always worried I'm going to get this one wrong saying it fast. General Ectoplasm Ex Exposition and Knowledge Society. Just such a great, I love that with the. With the bottle caps guys thank you so much for being with us tonight especially a busy night like tonight and it's and a few uh, other ones that are watching but are not in the chat <laughs> yeah and Mun oh munmore did axel cam video oh, wow. i'll have to go and check yes, that out i'll definitely go check that out right away uh pacific no sorry buddy it's eastern time
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I figured you were gonna. I know, I know, and I tried my best. Thank you so much for your patience while I did your name. You're, 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 it's an honor, and I do think it's a great name. I love it. Look how it stands out. Actually, sometimes when I see it moving and you're typing a lot, I feel like you've, like it was a comment that was just automatically banned or something. <laughs> 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 guys you have a great night and uh enjoy the pj party tomorrow so mill hill geeks bottle caps all yous make sure you got your pjs on okay guys love the heaviest <laughs> take See care guys bye bobby's a keep creating <laughs>